call or cleaning up the streets. Goodbye. With a style. You see it all in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Sometimes you see it all in the same game. Just when you've seen one great Steve Eiserman move, you see another. Where else can you see Marc Messier try to take the Oscar away from Paul Newman? When you've seen all the fancy moves Coffee and Klima have to offer, you can watch their grinders imitation. And just when you're ready to watch overtime, you can see the biggest goal in the life of Marty McSorley. Those highlights from game three. Who knows what we'll see tonight as the Edmonton Oilers and Detroit Red Wings play game number four of the Campbell Conference Final on Stanley Cup 87. Tonight, from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, brought to you by Carling O'Keefe Brewery. Around here. Hunter now down right away. Hunter in for McTavish, off the skate, picked up a shot, they score! McSorley! And Edmonton, with 36 seconds left, takes the lead on a goal by McSorley. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stanley Cup 87. I'm Dave Hodge with the hero of game number three, Marty McSorley. It wasn't an overtime goal, but it sure did produce sudden death in the Red Wing camp. How would you describe your feeling? Oh, ecstatic. I, I can't believe it. it's the biggest goal I've ever scored. I've never been this far along in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And it's fitting that somebody like yourself should score in a year when the Oilers are getting a lot out of everybody. This isn't a team that's being carried by Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messier, as it might have been once. Well, you know, Mark had got us a couple of big, big goals early in this series. And against Winnipeg, they were using our third and fourth lines. And when you're on the road, the third and fourth lines have to play well. It's a grinding hockey game, a low-scoring game that you hope to grind a goal out. Some people would be surprised that the Oilers can play this kind of hockey this well, are you? Well, you know, basically through the season, we score so many goals, and Wayne and Mark score so many goals that there's a lot of attention that way. But you've got like guys like Craig McTavish and, and Mike Krushelinski, our third and fourth line centermen, that uh, if you've got that much depth on your bench, that's a, you know, I look to those guys with so much, uh, so much pride, and I'm just glad to be able to play with them. It was a big moment for Marty McSorley and for the Edmonton Oilers, who took the lead in the series on his goal with 36 seconds to go in the third period. Now let's join Jim Taddy. Thanks very much, Dave. Another capacity crowd is assembled here at the Joe Lewis Arena. There are some thoughts about that. Should the Wings get behind early and uh, they go on to lose this game, of course, this will be the last home game of the regular season. So if that trend happens, maybe the fans will turn on the Wings as they did in the early stages of the Toronto series. Three lineup changes for the Red Wings tonight in goal. Glenn Hanlon, Greg Steffen will be the backup. On the blue line, Jeff Sharples, the rookie out of Portland, will suit up in place of Steve Chason. And on the right side, it'll be Rick Sealing replacing Mark Kumpel. There are no lineups lineup changes for the Edmonton Oilers tonight. And we did not see any flying octopi here on Saturday. That may happen tonight. From Detroit, game four of the Campbell Conference Final on Stanley Cup 87. Hey, everybody, the new computers are here. Back live at the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit, where right now the Oilers take the ice and followed quickly by the Detroit Red Wings. Let's Look in on that reception from the big crowd. booth at the Joe Lewis Arena with John Davidson. I'm Dan Kelly. John, a warm night here for game three, and it's warm again today. The temperature in Detroit at 86 degrees this afternoon. We're in for another warm evening. Yeah, not only is it hot, it's the humidity in the air. The players talked about, there's a thermometer we have up near the booth that's sitting right at 80 degrees. Uh, and you, you see how hot it is here. The players themselves talking about game three were saying they'd skate around during the game and boom, they get hit with a hot air pocket. It provided a lot of problems for them. They try to keep this building 
at game time down is 70 degrees. They say during the game at ice level, this is, it gets back up towards 75. That 80 degrees that we showed is way up high in the press box, and it's going to get a lot warmer. They had some problems with the ice this morning where the plant broke down, but they had an electrician in, and it's all fixed, and they're ready to go. And so are the Ostroms here in Detroit. You know their story. Nine-year-old Heather, 11-year-old Kirsten, and the mom, Carol Lee Ostrom, from Seattle, Washington. They've become quite a hit during the Stanley Cup playoffs with their performances of the National Anthem. Three pretty ladies ready to walk out the red carpet here at the Joe Lewis Arena for the National Anthems prior to this game. But of course, the Oilers lead the series two games to one. Let's let the Ostroms take over. Ostrom of Seattle, Washington. As they sing the U.S. and Canadian National Anthem. from Seattle, Washington. And there's the mom greeting them, Carol Lee Ostrom. The referee tonight, Dennis Morrell. The two linesmen, Wayne Bonney and Bob Hodges. And the starting goaltenders, Grant Pure for the Edmonton Oilers. He's been stingy against the Red Wings. 
Only one goal against in each of his last two games against Detroit. And for the Red Wings tonight, the man that Jock Demers calls his stopper, Glenn Hanlon. A 1.47 average in the playoffs and a couple of shutouts here in his last two games at the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. Can Mr. Hanlon do it again, J.D.? Well, he sure hopes so. He played very well. He's the goaltender that when Jacques Demers finds his team in effects, he goes right to Glenn Hanlon, and he's responded. Remember the big trade they made this year with Quebec, a six-player deal. There was a lot of controversy, a lot of publicity. Well, they played Hanlon the next game, and it was a big win in Pittsburgh. They're hoping he will win again. And they went with Hanlon when they were down three games to one to Toronto. Here we go with game four and Randy Gregg over to Kevin Lowe and the Oilers clear to center ice. Rick Zombo firing it back in for Detroit. Now Gregg flipping it high into center ice. Lewis will chase back to get it for Detroit. Number 25 Lewis that's a nice thing though. And a face off as we had a late hit and then Probert has some words with a couple of the Edmonton Oilers. It was an icing play McTavish who started the game at center ice more of a reward than anything else he's played so well he went in and banged in behind the net Glenn Sather back behind the bench looking on with John Muckler Sather talked about the style of play his team has to incorporate he had a little bit of trouble with Oates in the third period Adam Oates for Detroit on the draws but he does it very well and he had a goal and an assist in that Game three victory. Face off is going to be deep in the Edmonton zone. And the Cavs doesn't have to worry about taking this one as Glenn Sather goes to his best face off man, and that's Messier. And he's against Mark Lamb, who was not used very much in game three by Detroit. Messier wins it low to Craig. Quickly to McClellan, who just lets it slide down to the Detroit end of the ring. Number four is Rick Zombo. Back for the Red Wings. It's pass to Lamb. Now to Tim Higgins, broken up by Kent Nielsen. And here's Anderson back into the Red Wing zone to Smith, or into the Oilers zone to Smith. Smith giving it to Messier. Into Anderson. Anderson trying to go around Burr. Anderson hit the side of the net. Now at the point, Roots Alignan held it in. His shot deflected by Anderson. And then the Red Wings, DeLorme, cleared it out onto left wing. Bridgman shot it to center. Edmonton controlling. Or in the second minute of the opening period, no score. Well, that's see what I mean by puck control. How they're going back with a puck. This is what Sather wants. He doesn't want them to have to give it away. He feels that their team has the puck. The other team can't score, and he wants Detroit to make a mistake. Here's Messier, taken out on the play by Bridgman, but roots the line and carries in. Couldn't get around Norwood. Burr shoots it out of there. Just missed Bridgman, but it would have been offside anyway. Have the puck cleared out. Carried in by Detroit. Back come the Oilers. Kent Nielsen, number 15, to Gretzky. Shoots. Hanlon got a piece of that. And then as it bounced off the glass, Hanlon caught it and held on to it. First shot for Glenn Hanlon by Gretzky. You'll see the Oilers move over the blue line. And Gretzky waiting for it. He's not fooling around in this hockey game. You see him get the puck, not try and be fancy with it. Takes the shot immediately. Now Jacques Demers has made some lineup changes for this hockey game. He's got ceiling in the lineup. He wanted some experience in ceiling. Delorme only took the second half of the warm-up. He has a bad instep. Realistically, Jacques Demers said if they don't win this game, they're as good as finished. He said he sees very, very little chance if they lose this one that his team will win three straight. And as well, Demers has called up Jeff Sharples from the Portland team in the Western Junior Hockey League after they were recently eliminated. And he's in the Detroit lineup tonight. He feels that with the loss of Beach, he needs some offense from his defense, and Sharples could give him some. Here's Lewis trying to clear it out in the Red Wings. Fire it into center ice. The pass was too far ahead for Gerard Gallant. Back to get it is Charlie Huddy. Huddy for Edmonton. Giving it to Coffey. Back to Huddy. Head manning it into center ice for Yerry Curry. Curry bumped by Lewis. Gretzky gets it. Gretzky stops on a dime. Back to Huddy. Shot. Hanlon got a piece of that. Now Gretzky. Still controlling it. Taken out of the play. Iserman has it. 
He falls to the ice, and Gallant has it for Detroit. The Zombo. Now ahead to Probert. Broken up by the Oiler defenseman Huddy, and Gretzky takes over. Gretzky with just one assist in the three games. Glenn Sather says he's about to burst out. And you can see it here in the first three minutes of this period. He's had the puck the whole time, much like Messier did in game two early in that game. You have a feeling that Gretzky's going to roll in this hockey game. Here's Gretzky, given a rough ride by Lewis. Now Curry pulls Lewis down, and Gary Curry will get the game's first penalty. And we will have a power play coming up. No score, 17.05 remaining, period one. Take a close look at... Gary Curry in the penalty box for holding the first penalty of the hockey game. He was working in the Detroit zone. He quit skating on Dave Lewis. He grabbed a hold of him, spun him around. Detroit were 0 for 6 in game 3 on the power play. And they're 1 for 11 in this particular series. That only goal was scored by Probert. Now Edmonton, they're penalty killing. They've had 31 chances against on the road. They've killed all 31. They're shorthanded now. Here's Klima giving it to Mike O'Connell. And the rookie Sharples is out there, and he takes O'Connell's pass. Head manning to Oates. Oates firing it in. Now Pure missed it back of the net. Brent Ashton into the corner for Detroit. Gives it to Adam Oates. Oates to Peter Klima. Klima tied up by Lowell. Now Oates getting it free. Back on the point to O'Connell. Shot around behind the net. Oates in the corner. Now Sharples pinching in. Held it in with a good play at the point. Then lost it, and it's cleared away by Randy Gregg. Back is O'Connell. O'Connell, a point man, along with the 19-year-old rookie Sharples. Here is Sharples. Shoots it into the Oilers' zone. Kevin Lowe back after it. Tries to clear it, got it by O'Connell. And it goes the length of the ice, 105, left in Curry's penalty. Hanlon cleared it. Here's Messier. Gets it in behind the net. Now the Red Wings. O'Connell tried to clear it, held in by Edmonton, centering pass. O'Connell knocked it down, lost it. Sharples had to clear it. Here's Messier, shoots just wide. And Iserman takes over. To Gallant, poked into the Oilers' zone. You are there to set it up for Coffey. Paul Coffey beats the first man, beats the second, leads a rush to center, has Gretzky with him. Messier trailing, pass to Messier. Messier couldn't get it to Gretzky. 20 seconds left in the penalty. Here's Probert for Detroit. Waving it for Gallant. Drop pass intercepted by Messier to Gretzky. Gretzky leaving it there. For Hunter back to Gretzky. Big save, Hanlon. He just got a piece of it and then it hit the side of the net. Back comes Iserman. And the Oilers are back at full strength. Iserman trying to clear it in. Robert couldn't control it. Smith gets it into center, and here's Gretzky. On the fly is Wayne Gretzky. Into Hunter. Well wide with that shot. Smith at the point. Fired it in, but Detroit's Iserman cleared it to Higgins, and that's broken up by Edmonton. I think the pep talk that Wayne Gretzky received from his dad, Walter, after game three has worked. He is having himself a fine beginning to this hockey game. Now the Red Wings ceiling shooting it down into the Edmonton zone. Back to get it is number five for the Oilers, Steve Smith. No score. We passed the five minute mark here in the first period. Buck fired in by the Oilers. Tikkanen shot it in, now held in by Roots and Linen. The Tikkanen shot right on, stick save Handler. And it's Mark Lamb, number eight for Detroit. Cleared it into center ice. Essa Tekin and loses to Higgins. Higgins checked and crucial Niski shoots it back in for Edmonton. No score in the game as Rick Zombo fires it to center. Going back to get it is Kevin Lowe. Lowe to McSorley. Marty McSorley centered one. Zombo breaks it up. Cleared it back out. Now shot back in by Greg. Dave Lewis is there. Lewis to Klima off the boards. Too far for Oates. Kevin Lowe back for Edmonton. Lowe uses the boards. 
Gets it to Randy Gregg. Into center ice for McTavish. And he was checked by Sharples at the Detroit line. Seven minutes into this hockey game, Detroit have not had a shot on goal. And they've also had a power play, remember. So Edmonton have their wills in this hockey game. Here's McTavish. Takes a hit from Oates, but got it into center ice. Sharples to Oates. Oates now moving it in. Here's Klima. Peter Klima stick handling in. Shoots. Save by Fuhrer. Here's Norwood. To O'Connell a drive. And Van Dort blocked that one. And another shot caught by Fuhrer. And he held on to it as the Red Wings finally get some shots with the score. Detroit nothing, Edmonton nothing. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. Twelve forty five left in the first period no score the Red Wings didn't have a shot for quite a while John but when they did get one it was a good chance by Klima. Yeah, it was a great chance by Klima their best offensive player went to the outside but Grant Fuhrer he just simply doesn't fold in the playoffs and he just played it smartly then he had a second shot it was just a long shot he held on to it to slow the play down in his own zone. Here's Messier dumping it in for Edmonton. Cleared around on the boards now Lee Norwood there to try and shoot it up. Nielsen held it into Messier, centered in front, and fanning on it was Paul Coffey who moved in. Now back comes Eiserman with the lamp. Eiserman puts on the brakes. Tried a shot that was blocked. Get Nielsen now at the puck. But Probert has it for Detroit, and now in front of the net. Penalties against each team as Coffey got involved with one of the Red Wings, and each team will be penalized here. Coffey and Gallant to the penalty box. Paul Coffey in the penalty box for Edmonton. As is Gerard Gallant. Gallant's is for cross checking. Coffey's is for slashing. And Morrell is jumping on that stuff early to make sure nothing happens. Sather's had his fourth line on the ice once, and that's when Klima had the good scoring chance. Van Dorp is dressed, and he was on the left side. For that play. Now you see a, a face off here. It's Burr against Messier. We're seeing that matchup for the second straight game. And they've tried to get Eisenman against Gretzky. These are Jacques Demers matchups, the ones that he wants. He's on, he has the last change, of course, home ice advantage. Here's Nielsen giving it to Glenn Anderson. Shot right on. Skate save by Hanlon. Edmonton dumping in the corner. Burr there bumping with Anderson. Burr gets it, trying to clear it. Got it near the line, and then Anderson just dropped it back to center anyway. Roots aligning to Anderson to Nielsen. Get Nielsen. Poor pass intercepted by the Red Wings. But Koser was upended as he moved into the zone. Back come Edmonton. Here's Anderson. Trying to feed it to Messier. Messier in front, but Mel Bridgman intercepts. Bridgman number 15. Into center ice, pass to Koser. He shoots it into the Oilers' zone. Randy Gregg back to get it. Gregg bumped hard in the play by Burr, and we're going to get a penalty against Burr. Delayed penalty coming up. Here's Messier dropping it back. Fiora's gone to the bench on the delayed penalty, and now Fiora runs into Koser, I believe, on the way to the bench. Fiora finally gets off, but they had quite a collision. Delayed penalty coming up to Burr of Detroit. As Messier tries to work it out and does to Gretzky. Klima knocked it off Gretzky's stick, but didn't get possession, so there's no stoppages yet. Edmonton try again. Tekin into Greg. Into center ice to Messier. Coming up was Lewis to break it up. Nielsen gets it. The play was offside. And now the delayed penalty called against Burr. And we had quite a time with the Oilers with six attackers on the ice. And Grant Fuhrer even got decked by Koser with the score. Edmonton nothing, Detroit nothing. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. In her. John Burr off for elbowing, 924 the time. Randy Gregg takes the body check, the elbow up high. Wow, did Gregg get hammered on that play? And then in front of the Edmonton bench, Koser is going to get the puck. Grant Fuhrer is trying to get there for the extra attacker. More of an accidental collision than anything else. So Edmonton on the power play, their first one in this game. Their last power play goal was scored by Kent Nilsson in the first period of game one of this series. They've gone 11 power plays 
without a goal, 0 for 8 over the last two games. And only 1 for 13 in the entire series for Edmonton. Here is Curry flipping it in. He lops it up high. Back to get it is DeLorme cleared it. And Iserman picks it up. Iserman into center ice with a pass to ceiling. Curry takes him out. And Edmonton come right out of there. Leaving it for Curry. Into center ice to Tikkanen. Essa Tikkanen firing it. Going back to get it is DeLorme playing on a tender instep tonight, but he banks it off the boards. Down the ice again. 118 left in the penalty. Here's Curry. Leaving it for Messier. Messier gained the zone. Couldn't. Now Detroit failed to clear it. Gretzky to Messier. Messier to Huddy. Over to Curry. Curry behind the net to Gretzky out in front. Fanning on it was Messier. Huddy shoots one. Stick save Hanlon. And it deflects up into the crowd. The Oilers had an outlet man for that last play. And that was Gretzky back behind the net waiting for the puck. And finally, Charlie Huddy had the shot. You'll see Huddy move in from a bad angle, but he hits the net. The key is to hit the net. Hanlon was forced into making a real good save. Detroit keeping the Oilers to the outside. Dave Dryden, former NHL goaltender, is the goaltending coach with the Red Wings. He talks to Hanlon on days of games. If he's not here in Detroit, he'll call him from his home in Toronto, where Dave Dryden is a school teacher. And they talk about things, what to expect in that particular hockey game, about how he's been playing. Glenn Hanlon likes to arrive at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the day of a game. That's early. The big difference that most people that know Hanlon see in Glenn is the fact he seems more relaxed in the last couple of years. What he's done, Dan, is he's deflecting the pressure. Instead of putting it on himself, he's deflecting it off, saying, it's, hey, it's not my job to have a good game. The other guys can have it. They make me look good, etc." Edmonton still in a power play. Kent Nielsen at the point. Into Gretzky. Back to Rutzelainen. Now to Gretzky. Into the corner to Messier. He lost it, and Dave Lewis cleared it away. 32 seconds left in Sean Burr's penalty for Detroit. Roots the line and back to get it, but leaves it for Nielsen. Three man rush into the Red Wings zone. Anderson firing it around on the boards. Now Gretzky dropped it back, but missed Roots the line with the pass. Nielsen has to retreat. He gives it to Gretzky. Gretzky flipping it in. Knocked down. Now into the corner, Lewis trying to clear it. Messier intercepting. Messier in front to Anderson. Detroit's penalized player, Burr, back on, and there he is. He gets upended, but shoots it into the Oilers' zone. Give Detroit credit for some fine penalty killing, smart, patient penalty killing in their own zone. This has to be by far the worst part of the Oilers' game right now, and that's their power play. Everything else is clicking pretty well. Here's Peter Klima for the Red Wings around to DeLorme. Back of the net to Zombo. Zombo playing it off the boards. Held in by Huddy for Edmonton. Now Dave Hunter taken out of the play by DeLorme. And Zombo feeds Ashton at center. Three on two, Red Wing break. Drop pass. It comes back in front to Ashton. But the pass was behind him from Adam Oates. And the Oilers, Hunter starting back. Hunter taken out of the play. And here's Peter Klima. Two Oates. Oates leaving it for Brent Ashton. Ashton over to Zombo. Zombo tried to center. Huddy a good play to break it up. Zombo into the corner to Oates. Now it is centered and Huddy comes up with it. Up for number 24, McClellan. He got to center. Klima checked in. Klima then loses it back to number 24, Kevin McClellan. And it's just dumped in by Edmonton. And then some words between Hunter and Klima as they went to their respective benches. Back is Ashton shooting it in. McSorley to Crucial Niski. Dropping it back. Now that's Gallant in for checking for Detroit. And now Van Dorp, number eight, flips it in for the Oilers. Hanlon clearing it on the boards, and Probert shoots it right back into center ice. Less than seven minutes to play in the first period. No score. Randy Gregg shoots it to center. O'Connell takes it there. Probert trying to clear it in. He's bumped by Van Dorp as they're out head-on against each other. 
Now it's low into the corner. Centered out in front by Probert, but quickly cleared by Greg. And Van Dorf then lost it. Shot back in by Gallant. Here's low to Randy Greg. Greg off the boards. It comes to center and Lee Norwood. Number 23 for the Red Wings. Firing it back to the Edmonton Blue Line. Well, Edmonton have had control of the puck about 70% of the time in his period, yet it's a scoreless hockey game. Detroit just aren't allowing many quality shots. Edmonton certainly has not had quality shots at all. Now here's Essa Tikkanen trying a shot. That's blocked by DeLorme. And Norwood feeds Steve Iserman. Iserman, number 19, back to Gallant. Tried to center. Tikkanen back checking comes up with it. Into center ice to Gretzky, back to Tikkanen. Tikkanen into Gretzky, lets it go to Smith's shot. Hanlon the save. And as he fell back, he grabbed the rebound. Glenn Hanlon in goal for the Red Wings tonight, hoping for some more shutout miracles. There is a passageway. Edmonton nothing, Detroit nothing. 5.41 left in the first period. DeLorme barely made it to the bench. As I mentioned earlier, he only skated in the second half of warm-up. He got hit by a slap shot from Rutzelainen in game three on his right instep. And there he is bent over. He is in some kind of pain, and he's been trying to play. I would imagine, I can't say for sure, but him missing the first half of warm-up, I would imagine they tried to freeze up the sore area in his foot. And as the game progresses, that freezing, the, the feeling goes out of your foot. He may have to have more injections if he's going to continue. He's certainly trying. Shots on goal to this point favor Detroit, 7-2, to two, but there's no score. Gretzky on a faceoff, deep in the Edmonton zone, as the linesman Hodges now moves some people out of the faceoff circle. Edmonton put all three forwards in on the line. They leave Steve Smith, the left defenseman, at the top of the circle. Gretzky's going to try and get it back on his forehand. He and Tikkanen now discussing what they're going to do. Watch Gretzky turn and cheat. Tikkanen's talking to everybody. He's, he's going to try and get underneath the skin of the Detroit players. It's one of the few times Gretzky's been out on the ice without having to face Iserman. Right now it's Adam Oates ready on the faceoff, and Gretzky wins it. Gretzky centered, cleared away by Lewis. Now Tikkanen. Tikkanen gets knocked down, and Oates... Got it to Ashton to Klima. Klima one on one against Rutsalina. Shoots one right on. Pure to his knees. To make the save and hold on. Rutsalina stayed with Klima, but Klima made a nice little move to set up a pretty good shot on Fuhr. It almost snuck through the legs of Grand Fuhr. Detroit, they have a lot of slogans all throughout their dressing room on the inside. This is one of them. And it's Jacques Demers with his positive thinking. If you think you're beaten, you are. He never thinks he's beaten. And you see him work on the Detroit bench. Now, Klima goes to the inside, back towards the middle, so he can get his forehand available to take the shot. And Fiora held on with a pretty good save. It's only the third or fourth faceoff in the Edmonton zone all period long. Messier's taking them all. And Messier wins this one with Smith back to get it to Rutsalina. Up the middle for Messier, behind him, but now Gretzky gives it to Messier. Now it's Curry, flipping it in, and Zombo is back together. Zombo to Klima. Peter Klima for the Red Wings, winds up with a shot. And a save by Pure. Ashton in to get it. Behind the net to Klima. Klima taken out, and Honey got it to Curry, now to Tikkanen. Now to Gretzky, to Curry. Huddy takes a hit from Lewis, but shot it in, and Zombo tries to clear it. Coffey around on the board to Gretzky. He missed it, and it's taken by Klima. Number 85, Klima. Two Oaks, and Oaks fires it in for Detroit. You get a feeling for a hockey game. You look at Detroit playing his first period. Klima's by far their best player, and that's one that Glenn Sather should start paying special attention to. Here's Tikkanen with a shot. Wide of the target. Huddy held it in. Now it's knocked off Huddy's stick back to the order line, and Paul Coffey gives it to Essa Tikkanen and to Yari Curry. Curry against Norwood. Flipped it in front off the skate. Outside the line, though, they rule that Huddy held it in, and there's no offside call. And here's DeLorme back out there shooting it to the 
Edmonton into the rink with Paul Coffey, working it up for Curry. On the fly to Messier. Messier now gets tied up by Norwood, centered one, and Sean Burr took it away from Glenn Anderson. Here's the rookie Burr for Detroit. Tried to drop it back, missed his man, namely Bridgman, and back is Anderson for Edmonton. Norwood tied him up. Now Nielsen had Messier open, couldn't get it to him, as Bridgman tied up Kent Nielsen, and we get a stoppage in play. With the score, Edmonton nothing, Detroit nothing. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. With John Davidson, Jim Taddy, Dave Hodge, Dan Kelly at the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. A warm evening, 3.31 left in the first period, and there's no score. John Burr winning a faceoff. Now Messier back to try and get it, but it's cleared by Delorme. Randy Gregg pinching in to hold it in. Into the opposite corner for Tim Higgins for Detroit. He clears it to Burr. Burr on side on the play. Here's Burr moving in, and it's Anderson back checking to intercept. Lane Anderson for Edmonton to Kent Nielsen. Nielsen controlling it into Messier. Hanlon split across and stopped Messier. And Delorme gives it to Burr. The Red Wings come back. Shot in ahead for Higgins. Fewer there to clear it. And here's Messier who just missed a close-in try to Kent Nielsen. Lewis held it in, but broken up by Nielsen. Now Lewis has it again. Flips it in for Probert, but back is Roots Alinen to McTavish. He missed it, and Glenn Anderson fires to Nielsen at center. Kent Nielsen to Roots Alinen. Roots Alinen right in. Backhander handling the save. They score! Rebound! And... Hunter was there to knock home the rebound. Edmonton takes a 1-0 lead. Roots and with the speed broke through the middle. Detroit had just made a line change and changed their defenseman. Roots Alinen had done the same thing for the Oilers. He broke through the middle. You'll see the Oilers with the Hunter line. There's Roots Alinen with his speed. Now watch his stick. That's the only part of him that wasn't being checked. And Hunter comes in from behind. You're going to see three different Red Wings Look at the puck after Hanlon makes the first save. That's his job. Look at all those Red Wings around there. Three of them, four of them standing there. Nobody on Hunter. And Detroit, who were eight and one when they score the first goal, don't. They're one and four when they don't. Dave Hunter gets his third goal of the playoffs. Here's the man that set it up. Roots align him to Smith. And the puck comes into center ice. Iserman dropping it back to Gilbert Delore. He fired it in. Roots Alinen clearing it out, and here's McClellan, number 24. Two minutes left in the first period. one nothing Edmonton. Oilers dump it in. Hanlon there to clear it for Bob Probert. And Probert shooting it into the Edmonton zone. That's Paul Coffey back for the Oilers. Up the middle, missed Hunter with it. Now Ashton shoots it back in. And Coffey is back to pick it up. Coffey clearing it on the boards for McClellan. The scoring play. Hunter from Rootsalainen and Nielsen, 17.30 of the first period of the time. Edmonton back again to get it. Coffey cleared it, held in by O'Connell. No, it wasn't. It came out, and O'Connell carried it back in, and it's offside at the Edmonton blue line. 126 left in the first period. Dave Hunter has scored, and the Oilers lead 1-0. His Red Rooster, his Red Rooster. Play is just underway. The Oilers leading one to nothing with Charlie Huddy back in behind the Edmonton goal to Paul Coffey. Flipped high to center, and the veteran Dave Lewis beats Kretzky to it. Lewis played it off the boards. We're in the final minute of period one. Charlie Huddy clearing one. Now Holtz intercepting, dropping it back, and here comes Lewis leaving it for O'Connell. O'Connell. Out into center ice. Now Ashton ahead. Here's Coffey breaking up one intended for Oates. And O'Connell has to go back. He's upended, and then Curry tripped over him. Peter Klima gives it to Lewis. Lewis into center ice to Oates. Here's Adam Oates trying to weave his way through. Shoots one. That's wide of the net. Ashton in to get it, but well taken out in the orders. Carry right back. Nielsen couldn't get it out. Here's Klima shooting wide by about a foot. Delorme at the point into Ashton. Low tied him up. Now centered to Klima. Klima 
Trying to get away from Tekin. Knocked down. Norwood coming in. Centered it. Knocked away at the Oilers defense and cleared out of there on a good play by Charlie Huddy. Detroit have had four shots on goal. Three of them have been by Klima. Plus, he's missed the net a couple of times. He's been their entire offense. There's the only man that scored this period. Dave Hunter went in and picked up a rebound as he was not picked up. He scored his third goal of the playoffs. Brother of Dave and Mark, a native of Petrolia, Ontario. And his third goal of the playoff for Dave Hunter. Again, the late man cashing in for Edmonton, John. And what happened when Rootsalina went down, it was a forward Gallant that was back, but Gallant did a pretty good job. Zombo came back with Anderson. It was Dave Lewis who was trapped up ice a little bit. And when they came back, they simply didn't pick up the Oilers, and a late man scored. At the game three, I believe two of their goals were late goals, both of them. But two seconds left in the period, just time for the faceoff at the Edmonton Blue Line. We'll make a correction on that. McSorley's, of course, wasn't. But they had all kinds of chances with their late men coming through. They'll do that with Coffee and Roots and it because those defensemen have a lot of speed. Just two seconds remaining as Crucial Niski gets ready to take a faceoff outside the Edmonton Blue Line with Sean Burr. And there's the buzzer to end the first period. Dave Hunter gets the goal, and the Oilers lead it one to nothing after 20 minutes. From Detroit, you're watching Stanley Cup 87. You are watching NHL Stanley Cup 87 hockey on channels 2 and 7. Does your heart Welcome back to Stanley Cup 87, where in Detroit, the score after one period is Edmonton 1, and the Detroit Red Wings nothing. Ray Ho Rootsalainen made the play, and Dave Hunter scored the goal. The Oilers outshot the Red Wings 9-4. to For winning their respective division titles, these teams have had praise for their players and for their coaches, but something should be said about the owners as well. You'll meet them now. Jersey's got to mean something now, and it's meant a lot in the past. We've had this void for the last 20-some years, and uh, but it definitely means a lot, and we take a lot of pride in it. And as you look around our building right here, we're making every effort to make it a first-class building. Edmonton has some of the greatest fans in the league, certainly more knowledgeable than most cities. Uh, sometimes they tend to be a touch on the quiet side, but only sometimes. And uh, there's no question we'd like to see that uh, the Oilers uh, will be a dynasty uh, for the next 30, 40, 50 years. I'd like to see the goaltenders serve their penalties. In other words, when a goaltender, there is an infraction, I feel he should go right into the box. And uh, the other goaltender should go into the net and uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Necessarily saying the referees are doing a bad job. I think what is happening, uh, they're being told to let the fellows play the game. They forget the rule book. And it doesn't work. And we're having a lot of uh, feedback from our Edmonton fans saying if you're going to allow that kind of thing in, in hockey, why bother coming to the game? Jimmy Devolano runs his area 100%. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, they'll just check with me on big trades, like this last trade with O'Grodnick and uh, Ashton, that type of thing. But other than that, uh, they'll, they'll talk to me on various subjects, uh, but I don't think my opinion has got a lot of weight because, you know, I just don't have the experience. Well, Glenn and I, number one, are best friends. Uh, Basically, he has the, the say in the, in the run of the team, who's on the ice. Um, I've always kidded Glenn that I had a veto if he wanted to trade someone that I didn't, and vice versa. Um, but I've never interfered. Glenn does a heck of a job. In my opinion, he's the, he's the greatest general manager in the game today. And... Yeah, I consider myself a low-key owner, uh, I like to think. I think what got me a lot of attention was those free agents. You grow a little older, you find that uh, private time is possibly more valuable. Uh, family time certainly is more valuable. 
Well, they say it's not a good idea to get close to the players, but I like, uh, I enjoy the players very much. I find them very refreshing. And uh, by getting to know them better, I uh, like to have conversations with them and exchange ideas about values and life and things like that and see if I can rub off just a shade. Come to all the road games and playoffs. Uh, I'm always in the dressing room before and after each game at home. Um, I like to get to know them. Uh, they're a wonderful bunch of young men. Uh, in fact, when I look around uh, at groups of young people, hockey players to me are, are the elite. When you want to get served these days, it's like a belly up system. Who gets there first with their belly gets served. So I said to myself, you know, with a little food background, it'd be nice to put some interesting concepts in. And uh, I looked at the lighting and everything, and I said, I think I want to make it like a mall. So I took all the lighting, it was a brand new building, and just gutted the whole corridor. And uh, it gave me something to do. I knew I couldn't do a lot about the team initially. I'd do the best that I could. But I thought I'd show the fans some improvements physically in the facility. One of the things we're going to do for next year is take the expansion seats and uh, lower the price by about $4 uh, per seat and make them uh, strictly rushed. And my dad never allowed me to have a paper route, and I wanted a paper route real bad, so I asked him if I could go up and apply for a job at the car lot. So I went up there and he hired me. Uh... It's the real dollars came in buying and selling antique cars when I was a kid, when I was going to high school. That's yes, pizza pie. I, you know, I owe everything I had uh, flipping that pizza up in the air. Hey, Giuseppe, you know. <laughs> you become what you think about, and if you believe you're going to be successful, you will. It's just as well both owners don't make pizza or the broadcasters might not get through this Campbell Conference final. Jim Taddy's been wandering around the Joe Lewis Arena, hopefully not too close to those pizza stands. Jim? Thanks very much, Dave. The score after one period of play, Edmonton won and Detroit nothing. When we come back, we'll sample some opinion here in the concourse level of the Joe Lewis Arena. Perhaps we'll see if we can find an octopus or two. Stanley Cup 87 re returns in two minutes. When you're planning it, you are watching NHL Stanley Cup 87 hockey on channels 2 and 7. This commercial is not. Welcome back to Detroit, where the score after the first period of play is Edmonton 1 and Detroit nothing. We're on the concourse level here, and I'm, I'm just wondering is everybody happy with that score? They're not happy. They're not happy at all. Let's go over and meet Bill Hardy, who has the Stanley Cup. He's a Detroit Red Wing fan, obviously. Bill, what do you look like when you're in the hockey spirit? Oh, man, let's go, Wings! Come on, let's go! Woo! Bill, maybe you can uh, sort out for us, solve a problem. We heard a lot about the octopus. We haven't seen one. Why? Well, uh, I really don't know why. I think we're a little bit uh, tense tonight, but when we get that first goal, we'll see a big rain hailstorm of octopi on the ice. Why didn't you bring one? I'm disappointed, Bill. I'm disappointed. I, I got my hands full of Stanley Cup here, boys. See that? We got, we're going to win the cup this year. Let's go all the way. Okay, let's, let's move along here and see what we can get. Uh, we have another fan here. He's got an octopus shirt on. He's all right. And How come we haven't seen any octopi on the ice? What's going on? I don't know why all the fans haven't been throwing octopi. I think there's a lot of people here that usually don't come to the hockey games. And uh, they're just not getting to the spirit of things. I'd like to say hello to my mom and sister back home from Detroit. My well, I figure you get the point. From Detroit, game four, the Campbell Conference final on Stanley Cup 87. You are watching NHL Stanley Cup 87 hockey on channels two and seven. Game three, Bob Probert of Detroit was one of our Carling O'Keefe game stars. Here is why. Roots on and couldn't knock it down. Chance for Detroit. Eiserman fanned on the shot. Probert shoots. He scores! Bob Probert! It's the only goal the Red Wings scored in game number three, and they haven't had one since. The Detroit fans ready to erupt, but that's the only opportunity they've had as they've driven across from Windsor and are here in droves from Detroit to watch the Stanley Cup Campbell Conference Final. Edmonton leads by a score of one to nothing. The series shifts to Edmonton 
for game number five on Wednesday night, 9.30 Eastern, 7.30 Mountain here on Stanley Cup 87. I hate to think I've eaten the only octopus that might have been thrown, but if that's true, there is little chance of a lamb chop showing up on the ice. Right, Dan Kelly? Right, the greatest lamb chops in the league are here in Detroit. And I'll tell you what, Dave Hodge is setting a pizza eating record each night in the press room. A cool guy like you, this temperature doesn't bother you, J.D. That's the temperature in our broadcast booth yeah. at this point. Yeah, after this game, this shirt is guns. Oh, it is some hot up here. And I think that may be one reason why the fans aren't really into it as much. Maybe the fact that Detroit have not gotten any offense going at all. Klima had three of their four shots on goal, but it is some hot in this broadcast booth. This building as a whole. Again, the Red Wings tried to keep the play for the most part in the center ice area, but I don't think we're as successful as they were in the last couple of games. I think the main reason is, is Gretzky had himself a pretty good first period. Now, he had two shots on goal himself, but he just seemed to control the tempo early. Grant Fuhrer, not much work, but he's solid in goal once again. Eiserman was not nearly as prevalent during that first period as he had been in the previous three games in this series. Here we go with period two Edmonton leading one to nothing and the others work it to Mark Messier who slides the puck into the Detroit zone with Lee Norwood back after it. Now Gilbert Delorme for Detroit to closer missed him all the way down the ice and pure firing it up for Kevin Lowe intercepted by Burr a shot. seconds of the second period. Now it's Messier trying to fire it out of there as the Oilers come to center. Glenn Anderson into Messier cruising in shoots one and that's up high into the crowd here at the Joe Lewis Arena. Goal number seven of the Stanley Cup playoffs for that rookie Sean Burr. And that goes unassisted and that's a great time for their hockey club to get the goal, a 22nd mark of the second period. Burr, a first rounder in 84. He has been a good player. He worked in the minors with Bill Deneen. Bill Deneen runs their American League franchise in Adirondack. And Burr was their first rounder, number seven the same year. Mario Lemieux was number one for Pittsburgh. He's on a roll here, and he's had a tough assignment playing against Messier. Burr's seventh goal of the playoffs, 22 seconds the time. Burr from Sarney, Ontario has just tied it up. Now it's Zombo on the faceoff in the Red Wing zone. Rick Zombo clearing it. And the Red Wings get it to center ice. Steve Smith back for Edmonton. This pass to Rutsalainen, now to Tikkanen to Curry. He's checked, here's Klima. It was tied up at the blue line, and now it's Lewis flipping it in. Roots the line and out to Gretzky off his skate, and here's Iserman. He fires it back in. Roots the line and number 29. Almost lost it to Probert. Now here's Klima tied up by Smith. Gretzky back to get it to Curry. Curry can't clear it. Now Smith failed the first time to clear it. Now it's cleared to Tikkanen looking for Gretzky. Miss Gretzky with the long pass. Hanlon out to clear it. Curry held it into Tekin and backhander Hanlon. Stick save. And back comes Iserman. To Probert, back to Iserman. Iserman shoots. Good save by Fuhr as he got his right leg on it. Iserman to Probert. Probert bumped down behind the net by Huddy on a good play. And then Tekin gives it to McTavish. There's McCullen trying to get through the defense. Flipped it near the goal. Hanlon grabbed it and held on. 
And then McClellan tries to get into it with a couple of the Red Wings. He tried, first of all, to go in with sharp balls. Probert knows his job on the ice. He got over there. And yes, Jack Demers, he could be mayor here in Detroit. What? The Oilers won, the Red Wings won. Detroit, Detroit as you were pointing out in the last game, play better when they're on even terms or ahead in the game rather than playing catch up. And we'll see. I don't think they're going to change his style at all. They're going to try and wait for Edmonton to make a mistake without making any of their own and try and win a tight hockey game. Sharples was on for that last shift. He had one or two shifts only in that first period as Detroit had rotated five. We'll watch and see how much the Delorme plays in this second period. He's got that bad foot. And of course they're already without a couple of defensemen through injuries Darren Beach and Harold Snips. Here's coffee at his own blue line as the Oilers work it over to Huddy now into center ice here's Craig McTavish. McTavish slap shot blocked Ashton quickly cleared it right back out and number 22 Huddy is back after it over to coffee. Up the middle to McTavish, stolen by Detroit, chance, they score! Another turnover in that Edmonton zone. They have no problems with the puck to this point. And there's the play by Coffey as he was forced. And Gallant just a bang, bang play. Fuhr is ready for the turnover, and there's a hole between the legs. And Gallant finished it. Coffey had lots of time to bank the puck out of the zone. Instead, he went, the, went up the middle of the ice with it. Detroit intercepted, and they have struck twice here early in the second period. Playoff goal number seven for Gerard Gallant. See, Coffey has room there. But the pass was not quite accurate with McTavish. And just that little turnover, Detroit score a goal, and they are excited. And we have our first octopus. As Wayne Bonney got a hold of it and got it off the ice, what a pleasure that has to be. Gallant from Ashton, 2.32 of the time. And the Red Wings lead 2-1. to one. Here's Zombo shooting it in. Detroit race in, but Randy Gregg carries right back out. Fired in by McSorley. Groschel Niski tried to poke it. Now Hanlon caught it, cleared it off the boards. And Detroit's Ashton got it into center ice. McSorley dropping it back. And Kevin Lowe out on defense with Gregg. Lowe fired it into center. Lewis shoots it right back in for Detroit. There's Gregg. To low. Now to Krushelniski. Held in by Gallant, but then he was checked, and Krushelniski feeds Gretzky. He's taken out by Lewis. Gretzky on the ice in place of Van Dorp, and it looks like Sather's going to start double shifting 99 here early in the second period as his team trails. Buck has cleared the length of the ice by Detroit. Icing call with the score of the Red Wings, too. Edmonton won. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. Detroit as go wings go. So far in the second period, they've gone. <laughs> they certainly have. Shots at the end of one were 9-4 in favor of Edmonton. They are now 9-9. So five zip have been the shots. And Detroit have scored two goals in the second. Here's DeLorme to Burr, who got one of the goals. Got up to center. Roots the line and cleared it back in. And Lee Norwood fired it out to center. Smith for Edmonton. Tied up by Burr. And now Norwood played it high off the glass for Koser. He gets it into the Oilers zone. Roots the line in. Back to feed Messier. Now Burr intercepting in center ice. And Norwood has it at the Red Wing line to Gilbert Delorme. Delorme firing it in. Roots the line in. Gives it to Mark Messier. Messier checked by Burr. Here's the pass back to Burr. Hit the side of the net with that shot. Messier clearing it. Now it comes to Rootsalainen with Anderson. Two on two break. Rootsalainen 
Into the corner, taken away by Delore. Now, Ridgeman tried to clear it. Rootsaline and held it into Messier in front. Hanlon, big save on Kent Nielsen from close in. And then the Red Wings clear it over the glass. Glenn Hanlon with a big save on Nielsen. Standing ovation for Hanlon. Two men wide open. And Hanlon anticipates the pass with a quick move. He had his left leg and goal stick over there. Watch him just one push with his right leg, got his body over on his feet and made a big, big save for Detroit. Both defensemen were caught up ice. What a save that was by Glenn Hanlon. And that deserved a standing ovation here in Joe Lewis Arena. Well, the Oilers, John, had the momentum in the first period. It's been a big switch so far in the second. There's been three turnovers that Detroit have forced in the Edmonton zone twice. They've resulted in goals. Edmonton sloppy, very sloppy in their own zone here in the second. Red Wings win the faceoff. Zombo can't clear it. Here's Tekin into Gretzky. Centered. Comes to Coffey at the point. He's checked. And Coffey has to hustle back. Near his own line to Huddy. Now to Tekin. Quickly to Curry. Curry tied up by Lewis. Now Curry gets free. Gives it to Gretzky. Back for Coffey. Robert broke it up. Cleared up. Here's Klima after a loose puck. Klima with only Huddy back shooting. Your big save on Peter Klima. And then Probert gets into it with a couple of the Oilers in front of that net. But what a save Pure just made on Peter Klima. That's Jerry Curry who was mixed up with Probert. Glenn Sather worries about Curry. There's nothing wrong with showing emotion, but, but if you lose control of your temper, it's bad. Huddy's going to move to the outside there. Look at Klima cut across. Get the shot on the forehand. And Fuhr with a big save. Detroit rolling here in the second period. And penalties will be called. Well, a 2-1 to one Detroit lead. It was almost 3-1. Klima who can stop and turn so quickly. Just a one quick move and boom. Now Probert and Curry meet in front. And Probert is always around the top of that goal crease. Detroit really playing with some emotion. Probert's in the penalty box. So is Jerry Curry roughing Miners 5.05 the time. Coincidental Miners, so neither team shorthanded. But Detroit leading 2-1. to one. Quick shot by Klima just wide of the net. And Gretzky feeds it to Huddy. Off the boards, now into center ice to Messier. Messier into Paul Coffey, cutting in. Hanlon goes across and robs Paul Coffey. Glenn Hanlon with a good save. Again, this time he did something that's not very characteristic of his play. He drops down. And Hanlon, or excuse me, Coffey with a great play to get around Lewis, put it into the chest. Now watch. Hanlon drop early here. He's thinking it's going to be a pass. And the shot was right into his chest. A good save, nonetheless, by Glenn Hanlon. He's 10 for 11 in the save department in this hockey game. Adam Oates is not on the same line as he was earlier in the hockey game. They had Adam Oates out with Klima. In the second period, Eiserman centering for Klima. Eiserman won that last face off to the right of Grand Fury. Beat Messier clean. interesting in this hockey game. There's the Mariners talking with Lewis. So they're talking about staying up on the line, on the blue line on that last play. It was Coffey that went down and went around Lewis. And that's how Edmonton had their last good scoring chance. Now the others double shifting Gretzky again. He's out there on the line with Messier and Anderson. Base off is going to be to the left of the Red Wing goal. something wrong with his glove and that, the linesman will bring that over to the Red Wing training staff and that glove is one he only uses for games he uses a smaller one in practice this one he saves for games only the training staff a quick chance to look after that piece of equipment Morrell's actually giving Detroit a break here giving them a chance to fix the equipment Mark Brennan Mark Brennan is the man that did the quick fix, fix it job on the catching hand 
of Glenn Hanlon. Both goaltenders in this game catch with their right hand. Greg Steffen and Andy Moog, the backup goaltenders in this game. They each team actually carrying three. Edmonton has Daryl Ray as their third goalkeeper. And Mark LaForest is the third goalkeeper for Detroit. Two to one, the Red Wings lead. 14-39 left in the second period. Messier on a faceoff. Won it, but then Burr quickly cleared it to Koser. And back is Paul Coffey into center ice. Now picked up by Messier to Anderson. Anderson shoots, he scores! Glenn Anderson ties this game up at 2-2. You want to talk about a quick play where Edmonton had a control of the puck at their own blue line. Two passes and boom, boom. One right to Messier, one across to Anderson. Now Fuhrs, excuse me, Hanlon's moving. He's not set. Anderson stayed to the outside and put it through the legs of Glenn Hanlon, who was not set on the play at all. And the score is tied at two, and I believe that's the tenth goal of the playoffs for Glenn Anderson. Number ten for Anderson, and it's a big one tying the game at 2-2. That's and it came at a time when the Red Wings seemed to have the momentum on their side. It's the first time in the two games here in Detroit that either the Gretzky or Messier line have been able to click for a goal. And that was just a speed play with some accurate passing and a goal that stuck through the legs of Glenn Hanlon. Now it's dumped in by Edmonton and Bacchus Mike O'Connell. O'Connell into center ice to Rick Sealing against Kevin Lowe, the only man back. Sealing's backhander wide. In comes Lamb. He's checked, and Hunter fired it out for Edmonton to McClellan. Back. Sharples breaks it up. Now near the Detroit line, Mike O'Connell. Played it off the boards. Hunter gets it to Kevin Lowe. Over to Randy Gregg. Now to Craig McTavish. And he just dumps it in. Hanlon played it high off the glass. McTavish. Moves in, now Smith at the point. Shooting, that's just wide of the target. Higgins gets it for the Red Wings. And Higgins able to clear it as he took a hit from Hunter. Roots a line in for the Oilers. To Smith. Now in across the line for Crucial Niski. But it's offside at the Detroit blue line. And it was Glenn Anderson that tied this game up. Mark Messier skated about one stride with a puck and saw Anderson wide and hit him with the pass and we'll see him stay wide knowing the defenseman was going to cut him off and it's exactly what Glenn Hanlon wanted that's why he was able to move out at Anderson because he knew his defenseman was not going to let him cut across in front but the puck snuck through the legs of Glenn Hanlon Anderson's 10th of the year Messier and Coffey the assist 534 of the time the Red Wings to the Oilers too and Gretzky being double shifted here Crucial Niski's gone from center ice to left wing. Van Dorp sits, and Gretzky gets twice as much ice time. Here's Smith for Edmonton. Passing it across. McSorley didn't see it coming. Klima moved in. He's checked. And now back comes Crucial Niski. Trying to fire it in. Zombo missed it. Here's Smith. Couldn't poke it in front. And then sliding across was Lewis, and as he... Fell on top of the puck. We get a stoppage in play. With the score, Edmonton 2, Detroit 2. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. McSorley on the right side. Ian Iserman will try for the faceoff. As now the linesman moves some people around. Gretzky gets the draw to Smith. Smith shoots. Add and stick save by Hanlon. Crucial Niski. Getting it in on the boards to Gretzky. Back to Roots. Alignin with a drive wide. Now at the other point, Smith held it in. Here's McSorley. Marty McSorley moving in, put it right through the crease. Hanlon batted it away. Iserman trying to clear it. Now roots Alina. Behind the net to Gretzky, out in front. Backhander over top of the net by roots Alina as he moved in. Then Gretzky upended. And O'Connell will get a penalty here. And Edmonton will have a power play coming up right now. With the score, Edmonton 2, Detroit 2. Let's pause 10 seconds for the stations on the Stanley Cup Network to identify themselves. You're watching Stanley Cup 87 on 2 and 7 CFAC, Calgary.
Mike O'Connell to the penalty box and the Oiler power play ready to gear up. He grabbed a hold of Wayne Gretzky's stick. Gretzky was surrounded by big wingers for that shift. Crucial Niski and McSorley and those boys did the forward checking and O'Connell has a hold of Gretzky's stick right there and he helps it out with a dive and Morrell sends O'Connell to the box. Roots Linen, you know Edmonton in the games here in Detroit have had a lot of their offense with people coming late. Roots Linen had the last best scoring chance. The wingers come back so deep with Detroit that the defensemen are sometimes unchecked as they come in deep for Edmonton. And Jacques Demers is going to try and dodge a bullet here as Edmonton goes on the power play again. Oilers are 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. In this series, 1 for 14. Glenn Sather said to John and I prior to the game, he's happy with their execution. They're just not getting any breaks, he felt. And he felt some goal posts and bad breaks. I think on their power play, well, actually, it's tough for any power play to do well. The penalty killing's up a considerable percentage mark this year in the regular season and playoffs. It's because of advanced scouting, Dan, to do with videotapes, to do with television. There's no surprises anymore. Here's Anderson trying to go around Norwood did Glenn Anderson centered Messier open but his shot was blocked and then cleared away by Bridgman for Detroit. This is Huddy back for the orders. Huddy and copy the point men with Messier Anderson and Gretzky up front. Here's Anderson. Checked by Sean Burr. Burr fires a long one in and pure. Winds it around to Glenn Anderson. That's center to Gretzky. Gretzky moving in with Curry, and Curry moved in ahead of the play and was a little bit offside. Well, there was a day off in Detroit yesterday, so a number of the Oilers decided to get a chance to go see a Tiger baseball game, and they went and saw the Tigers come back late, knock off the Oakland Athletics and Reggie Jackson's ball club. Yari Curry and his his buddy, Ray Rutzelainen, made the trip. Faceoff is going to be at the Red Wing blue line. 105 left in the penalty. Gretzky getting the draw, and it comes all the way back into the Edmonton zone. Rutzelainen back to pick it up, giving it to Gretzky. He dumps it in. Coming in is Curry to get it. Curry trying to work it free. Now it's back of it in Norwood. Cleared it. Roots line and held it in. Into Anderson. Back to Smith. Into Gretzky. To Roots Alinen. Fakes the shot. Moves in deeper. Center to Gretzky. Shot it just wide on a deflection. Here's Curry. To Smith. Norwood goes to his knees to block the shot. And then DeLorme gets into it with one of the Oilers in front of the net. But Gretzky had snared one moment ago, John. He just tried a sneaky little deflection as Edmonton moved the puck around to the outside. Dan, I haven't seen Adam Oates on the ice for Detroit. I saw him once during the first period go to the bench slowly. I believe he's still sitting on the bench. Uh, he may have an injury problem, but I have not seen him on the ice here during the second period, and they've used Eisenman a lot. Gretzky, it's interesting, is using a shorter stick for this particular hockey game. He cut an inch off the shaft of the stick, and his theory is, and I believe this comes from his dad once again, the shorter the stick, the harder you have to work because you can't reach as much for the loose pucks. And maybe that's a mental thing with Wayne Gretzky to get him going a little bit in this series. He's played well to this point in this game. Hockey players all over North America are going to be chopping an inch off their <laughs> stick the next time they take the ice. Here is Gretzky. To Messier, back to Gretzky, to Rutzelainen. His shot blocked, and then batted by Burr, volleyball style, to the Oiler line. Just six seconds left in O'Connor's penalty. Here's Messier. Now O'Connell is back on. Messier weaving in. Shoots wide with a forehand. Now Gretzky centered. Norwood there to clear it out. And down the ice it goes with Steve Smith. Going back to get it, and that's icing against the Detroit Red Wings. An unsuccessful power play for the Oilers, and it's still a 2-2 game here in Detroit. It's coming. And he 
buddies hockey game here with 10 11 left in the second period the orders to the Red Wings too and Edmonton now 0 for 2 on their power play that last power play the closest they came for a shot was a deflection wide by Wayne Gretzky here's McTavish getting ready for a face off deep in the Red Wing zone somebody jumped it's Mark Lamb by the way out to take the face off against McTavish and now Lamb is tossed out of there and Tim Higgins will take the draw McTavish likes to do different things on faceoffs. sometimes what he likes to do is forget about the puck just lift the other team's stick and then when he's out muscling that other team centerman turn with his foot and kick the puck back to his defenseman we'll see if he does it here he doesn't do it all the time of course he draws it straight back to Greg. Greg shot block. Now McClellan. Bumping in the corner with Sharple. McClellan gets three. Out in front. Low and pinched in but fanned on it. And Detroit break out. Three on two break. Lamb moving in. Lamb tried to center but the Cavish was back and then Greg cleared it. And here come the Red Wings. McClellan trying to get around Sharple. Sharple's the 19 year old rookie poking it over. Onto the boards. Here's McTavish. Into the side of the goal. McClellan. Tied up on the play. Now Hunter. Jack and Jeff Sharples. From Terrace, British Columbia. Gets it to Higgins. Now to Rick Sealing. And he just poked it in. Low is there to flip it right back out. Now it's shot back in and offside. Sealing was trapped in there on the play. Randy Gregg missed. Son. A part of the third period in game three, his back seized up on him once again as that third period wound down. He was unable to bend over and pick up his stick. But it's pretty good shape for this hockey game. He did, has not missed time here. Now he, McTavish wins his clean from Higgins and they stay with each other. McTavish wants to interfere with Higgins so his men can make a play. Higgins' job is to stay with him. Now McTavish is trying to get away. <laughs> Looks like a saw going back. Looks and like forth he's there. sawing up a T-bone <laughs> steak for John oh, yeah. Davis. Ah, lamb, cho lamb chops tonight, Dan. <laughs> Here's Iserman playing it off the boards. Huddy there to get it to Crucial Niski. Now Coffey clears the zone into center ice. Knocked down by Lewis, but controlled by Edmonton. A man was open, but the pass was too far for Crucial Niski. And then McSorley. Almost getting into it with Probert there out in front of him at the puck in the corner. Over comes McSorley and now Probert breaks out. Probert moving it into Klima. Peter Klima shooting. Your got his hand on that and made a dandy save on the always dangerous Peter Klima. And Klima's first big chance of this second period, but Probert's the man that carried the puck out of the zone and made the play at the blue line to set up Klima. Look at that pass. What a great pass. Klima took his time to use the screen. And Grant Fear with that catching hand knocked it out of the air. But Probert, I was talking to a fellow by the name of Jack Birch today, who was one of the assistant coaches with the Rangers until Ted Sater and the crew got fired. He thinks that this man, as far as policemen in the league go, may have the most skills amongst the policemen in the league. And I think on that last play, you saw Bob Probert handle the puck extremely well and hit the open man and set up a good goal scoring chance. I think a lot of us in this playoffs, not just this series, but Detroit's playoffs have had their eyes opened about the talents of Bob Probert. Well, he's had personal problems without question. The days passed. It is hope he can keep his life together as far as those problems go with alcohol. And you just hope that he can continue to play well because the man has skills and he's thriving here in the playoffs. Iserman with Klima and Probert, the forward line for the Red Wings. As they get ready to face it off deep in the Edmonton zone. Crucial Niski on the draw. The Red Wings win it. Klima's shot. Stick saved by Fuhr after Iserman won the draw. Here's Probert. Centered it. Fuhr knocked it away and Gretzky. Outlet pass to McSorley. Only Zombo back. Drop pass to Krushelniski. Cutting in. Backhander and he shot it wide. Now Smith pinches in for Edmonton. Round on the boards. McSorley lets the shot go. That hit Krushelniski. Gretzky. 
Enter to McSorley. Hanlon a stick save. Now Gretzky a shot. Hanlon stopped that. Another stop by Hanlon. And we stop Crucial Nisky. Now Probert and McSorley pushing away. We talked about Probert with some good moves. This time it was Marty McSorley's turn. He's the man that sets up Gretzky from behind the net. The puck is kept in. Now you'll see Gretzky move it to the man in front. There's one of the shots. McSorley gets his own rebound. Back to Gretzky. McSorley, whose skills have improved immensely since he started playing with the Oilers, sets up some shots here. You'll watch him go after the loose puck as he and Gretzky work to the left side of Glenn Hanlon. Look at the interference in front by Krushelniski throwing his man down. That opened up the front, and Hanlon made two or three big saves for his hockey club. He stopped McSorley, Gretzky, and Crucial Nisky in that order. Glenn Hanlon also had a great goaltending coach by the name of Wayne Thomas with the New York Rangers. That really helped Hanlon his last year there. Now low at the point, unable to hold it in, just flips it over, and Nielsen at it. He lost it. And here's Norwood for Detroit to Burr. Burr stick handling in. Messier back checking. Gives it to Lowe. Now to Anderson. Back for Lowe. Leaves it for Anderson. Shoots right on. Stick save Hanlon. Here's Messier. Cuts in front. Couldn't get his shot off as he was cut off as he tried to cut in front. Now Delore. Out to Mel Bridgman. Broken up at center. The Oilers come right back. Messier drops to Nielsen. DeLorme was there to break it up. And the Oilers have to chase back near their own line. Here's Lowe to Greg. To Nielsen to Anderson. Two Oilers up the ice, three Red Wings back. Anderson shot wide. And now a Detroit player down on the ice and injured. Norwood is the player that went down. Anderson went in and took the shot. And Norwood dropped immediately, holding his face. And I'm not sure what happened. I know this much that neutral zone that Jacques Demers tries to have his players clog up is not being clogged up. I'm telling you, Edmonton is starting to get their speed going between the blue lines. Anderson takes a shot, watch his stick. Comes right up and clips Norwood on the right side of his face up high. Lee Norwood, the injured player, with the score Detroit 2, Edmonton 2. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. Lee Norwood to the Detroit bench. They already have lost a couple of key defensemen like Darren Beach and Harold Snaps. They have Gilbert Delorme limping around and now Norwood. I don't know if he was cut or not, but he took that stick in the face. Actually, the follow through of Anderson missed him, but when he brought the stick back, it caught the left side of the face of Lee Norwood. And he was in for a jolt. Jim Pengali, the trainer, helping him out. And Schnapps, I don't think, will be back for this series. And if they of course, like to think positive with Detroit. He thinks he may be back for the finals if they get that far. His shoulder has really dropped down. In fact, it's dropped about an inch from that separation. One of the players, Mike O'Connell, asked Snaps if he wanted to put a parrot on the part of the shoulder that hadn't dropped down. <laughs> That's how much of a difference there is. Here comes Oates, who's been used sparingly in this period for Detroit. To Gallant, up high with that shot. And Gretzky. I declared O'Connell held it in. Edmonton couldn't clear it. Here is Ashton shot. You're a save, and now Van Dorp knocked off balance. Oates in for checking. Gets the puck into the corner. It's centered, but Edmonton break back, and here comes Curry. And Sharples, the rookie, broke it up at the blue line. Back Ashton shoots one. That's high off the glass. And Huddy has it for Edmonton. Here's Huddy. To Van Dorp, try to work around Dave Lewis. Lewis gets a piece of him. Now Gallant into the corner. Here's Curry, number 17 for Edmonton, has Gretzky open. Gives it to Gretzky. Gretzky back to Curry. Comes in front to Gretzky as O'Connell had been upended, and Gretzky will get a penalty. And then Gallant and Curry almost get into it. One penalty has already been called. It's to Gretzky for tripping. And then Gallant and Curry started pushing and shoving in front of the net. And Dan, for Wayne Gretzky, this will be his first penalty minutes of the playoffs. And he's into the 13th game. Curry and Gallant really got after each other. Ashton and Oates have not seen much ice time here in the second period. And I think they're pretty feisty for just, just basically from sitting on the bench. 
Now Van Dorp is out here and he's about ready to take his gloves off if need be. Gretzky having words with the Detroit players. I believe Gallant. So Gretzky and probably Gallant to the penalty box. We'll tell you when we return to Detroit. You might see. Well, the only penalty on the time clock is one to the Oilers, which I would be suspecting would be to Gretzky as you look at Wayne right now in the penalty box. And Curry and Gallant, I think, are in there, the coincidental minors. Gretzky's line were forechecking and working, and when Curry loses the puck here, we'll see Gretzky with O'Connell. And I think what Gretzky tried to do there was get to O'Connell and knock him off balance before he got to the loose puck. He ended up knocking his man right over. Look at Gretzky putting the fluids back in his system. He goes at 172 pounds. He says after a game, his weight will be down to around 163. It's a nine pound weight loss for a person that's not very big. That's a lot of fluid. And tonight, it may be more than that. It is very warm, as we've told you, here in Detroit. So in Edmonton, penalty situation Gretzky in the penalty box for tripping and then the coincidental minors to Curry and Gallant so it's going to be a Detroit power play and Curry and Gretzky work as a pair killing penalties for Edmonton and that's a lot of their offense in their penalty killing unit they use generally six different forwards so they're down to four now Here's Norwood injured earlier back out there now a key man for Detroit in the power play. Here's Iserman moving in with Probert. Randy Gregg makes a smart defensive play to break it up and clear it to center. Now Hunter trying to give it to Kevin Lowe into McTavish but he skated off by Norwood. And back comes Probert to Iserman. Iserman firing it in. Randy Gregg there. Lima comes in to forecheck. Buck loose to Iserman out in front. Back. Sharples had a shot block. Now Iserman into Probert. To the other point to Norwood. Into the side of the net to Klima. He's checked. Now Klima got it again and fired up high and pure. Made a glove save and held on. That was a tricky shot. That puck was on edge and it floats into a goaltender. Fuhrer stayed with that very well and held on. You know, players use different types of gloves. Here's two of the tough guys, the way they wear their gloves for the Oilers. There's no laces in McClellan's glove and one little lace at the bottom of the cuff of McSorley's glove. And that's because those players like to get rid of their gloves quickly if they have to. Anderson has a full array of laces in his cuff. Gretzky, no laces. That's sort of surprising, but that cuff on the right side there folds over very easily. It's built to bend over because when Gretzky plays with a puck, his wrists bend and he has such quick hands back and forth that he needs all that flexibility that he can use in the gloves. Still 106 left in Gretzky's penalty. 2-2 to the score, 5-0-3 left in the second period. Iserman and Messier, big face off in the order zone. Iserman wins it. Tried to center, did, and a shot from a sharp angle by Klima went wide of the target. And then Edmonton work it to Messier. Here's Messier with only Norwood back. Norwood uses the poke check. Klima comes up with the puck. Here's Klima. Into Norwood, winding it around to Probert. Back of the net to Klima. He's checked and quickly it's fired out of there by Paul Coffey. 30 seconds left in Gretzky's penalty. Eisenman doing a lot of little things better here in the second period than he did in the first and won his face offs. He's getting a lot more ice time because of it. Here's O'Connell looking for Brent Ashton. Puck hit the linesman. Back comes Hunter with Nielsen. One man back. Nielsen to Coffey. Coffey right in. Hanlon comes sliding off to stop it. And now Ashton with only Roots and back. Ashton shoots one. That's deflected. Gretzky's back on. The orders are at full strength. Here's Messier to Gretzky. And O'Connell does a good job defensively for Detroit. He shot it down the ice. Coffee 
And Oaks in to get it. Here's Coffey controlling it. And he fires it down. It bounces all the way. Hustling back to Zombo. And that's going to be an icing call against Edmonton. And then Gretzky gets into some pushing and shoving behind the net. And there you see the 19-year-old rookie Sharples. I think McClellan was in there, too. Jacques Demers had an article in the paper here in Detroit talking about how he liked the play of McClellan because McClellan is like a little old lady. She can be very agitating. And McClellan can be agitating if he wants to. There's a look at Sharples. He was playing junior hockey for Portland, the Winter Hawks. They lost to Medicine Hat in game seven of the finals in the Western Hockey League, and that game was in Medicine Hat. Sharples was on his way back to Portland when his father finally got a hold of him. Today, listen, they want to Detroit, get there quick. He at first thought his father was joking and kidding about it. Finally got here, he's a good offensive player. You'll see the points that he scored during the playoffs for Portland, and that's why he's on the point on the power play for Detroit. 20 points in 20 playoff games, and in the regular season, 60 points in 44 games. For Sharples. Sharples, by the way, started the season with Detroit in the regular season, but then has played the most part of the year with Portland. McClellan's still on the ice. Joey Koser has come on the ice for Detroit. He had words a second ago with McClellan. And now he goes back to the Detroit bench for a change. Detroit had seven players, or six forwards, excuse me, on the ice, six skaters. Adam Oates on the ice again for another shift. His previous shift was a good one for he and Ashton. They have not played those two players very much for Detroit in the second period. It is Oates, Ashton, and Gallant. Messier will take the big face off deep in the order zone against Dopes. 331 left in period two. And then jumping into the face off circle ahead of time was McClellan. That stops the drop of the puck. And Messier gets it. And the orders. Roots the line into McTavish. Tied up by Ashton, but manages to shoot it in. Hanlon scooping it into the corner. In is Hunter to McTavish. In front to McClellan. Hanlon knocks it away. Now Hunter take it out by O'Connell. Here's McClellan and Lewis battling in the corner. And they whistle it down, and we'll get a stoppage and a face-off in the Red Wing zone. Dave Hunter and Anderson have scored for Edmonton. Burr and Gallant have scored for the Red Wings. And they've all been even strength goals in this hockey game. There's a look at Kevin McClellan. Jacques Demers in that same article said he would love to have Kevin McClellan play for his hockey club. What he does is knock the other team off balance. This whole line actually does. Hunter, Hunter McClellan and McTavish. And as it was mentioned the other night, they call themselves plumbers, and they enjoy that style of play. It's going to be Iserman against McTavish. 2-2 Two -two of the score. 3.07 now left in the second period. Now Iserman steps in against McTavish. McTavish the draw to Smith. Shoots one, blocked, and Detroit break out. Here's Ashton. Has Gallant with him. Looks to Gallant. Pass behind him as Smith came back to tie him up. Now Ashton into the corner for Detroit. Dropped it back. McClellan intercepts. McClellan scooping it in. Lewis missed it for Detroit, but Ashton is there to get it to O'Connell. Quickly to Gallant. Held in by McClellan. Over to Hunter, but O'Connell picked that pass off and feeds Eisenman. One on one against Coffey. And Coffey went down and blocked the shot. And it's McTavish failing to clear it. Colser trying to center it. Now at the point. Into the corner, Coffey working it to Hunter. To McTavish, and O'Connell is there to knock it away. Here's Dave Hunter giving it to Paul Coffey. Back to Hunter. Into center ice. Huddy moving in. His shot wide. Now he centered it. Came right in front, but the Red Wings take control. Holster lost it. Now it's centered back to Lowe at the point. Got deflected by Krusalniski wide. O'Connell took him out. 
Norwood cleared it, but Gretzky intercepts. Gretzky tied up and checked by Norwood. And here comes Burr with closer. Into the Red Wing zone, closer back to Burr. Burr trying to center. And it's Kevin Lowe winding it over onto the left wing side. DeLorme pinches in, but Lowe gets it again. And here's Crucial Niski. And to McSorley, to Gretzky, to Crucial Niski right in. He shoots, he scores! Crucial Niski! And the Oilers have the lead at 3-2. Yeah, and it talked about Edmonton having speed going through that neutral zone. They do it again. Watch them come out of their own zone. Detroit players are trapped. See them, nobody in that neutral zone. Now they have speed. Now they can set up what they want. And there's a nice play. Hanlon opened the legs up again. Crucial Niski waited. He had nowhere to shoot the puck here at all. What a pass by Gretzky. Nowhere to shoot it. He waited. Finally, Hanlon opened the legs up. And Crucial Niski put the puck home. Gretzky was hammered pretty good after his pass by Dave Lewis. But he took the check to make the play. And Crucial Niski gives his team the lead. Crucial Niski second of the playoffs. Gretzky and McSorley get the assist. It's 3-2 Edmonton. That's that example of Glenn Sather double shifting Gretzky again. Van Dorp sat again on that shift. McSorley was on the one wing and he took Crucial Niski, who was usually the center on that wing, put him on the wing, on that line, excuse me, put him on the wing and Gretzky inserted and it worked. And a pinpoint pass by Gretzky led to the goal. Here's Anderson right back for Edmonton. Dufour handling out of the net to catch it. And he held it long enough that we get a stoppage in play, and we're in the final minute of period two. 58 seconds remaining in the second period. Jacques Demers is going to be wondering about what's going on. Pucks through the legs of my goaltenders. The winning goal by McSorley in game three through the legs. Two goals here in this period. On Hanlon through the legs. It's been a problem. Don McAdam there, the assistant coach, along with Colin Campbell on the bench. At Don McAdam was one of the coaches out of the Canadian college coaching ranks. As he coached in the East. Of course, Perron in Montreal coached the Canadian colleges. So did Mike Keenan and E.J. McGuire in Philadelphia. Tom three, Watt. Tom Watt, absolutely. Three of the four teams in the finals. Everybody but Edmonton represented in that department. Bob Hodge is trying to get everybody straight for this face-off. It's interesting, Van Dorp on the ice. It's the place of Ken Nelson with a minute left in the second period. Here's Messier against Iserman. And Iserman wins that faceoff. Norwood cleared it around. Held in by Van Dorp. Now Luke Salinen centered one, but Gilbert Delorme is there. And here's Delorme able to clear it into center. Iserman circling back for Detroit, trying to get away from Van Dorp. Gives it to Delorme. He scoops it to the Oiler line. Rootsalainen kicked it out into center ice, and here's Messier, and the Oilers have a three-on-two break. Messier cutting in. Shot was blocked. Van Dorp, a backhander on Hanlon. Kicked out his right leg to stop that. Here's Lee Norwood for the Red Wings. To Delorme. 15 seconds left in the period. 3-2 Edmonton. Rootsalainen controlling for the Oilers. Now to Smith. He got it to Van Dorp, to Messier. Messier looked at the clock and then just slid it down the ice because the second period comes to an end. And after two, Edmonton lead 3-2 to two here in Detroit. I think what we saw in the last half of that period, the Detroit defense started to back in somewhat. The shots ended up 18-16 in favor of Edmonton, but Edmonton started to gain speed going through that neutral zone between the two blue lines, and that's because Detroit's defensemen backed in, backed in, backed in, and I think they're starting to get tired. 3-2, Edmonton leading from Detroit. You're watching Stanley Cup, 87. Stanley Cup, 87, from Detroit, Michigan. Game four, the Campbell Conference Final. And after two periods of play at the Joe Louis Arena, it is Edmonton three and Detroit two. Four goals scored in that second period. Let's go over them for you. The first goal was scored by Detroit. Sean Burr has got a lot of key goals for Detroit this playoff season at the 22 second mark. Then Gerald Gallant scored for Detroit and that gave Detroit a two to one lead. All that happened at the 232 mark. 
Ben Edmonton got a couple of goals to change the uh, pace of this game. Glenn Anderson tied it. Then Mike Krusioniski got the uh, go-ahead goal at 1846. Shots on goal in the second period for Edmonton 9 for Detroit 12. As far as next action, it comes your way Wednesday from the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton. Game 5 of this series, 7.30 Mountain Time, 9.30 Eastern Time. Well, they called Detroit the Renaissance City, and until recently, that did not apply to the hockey team. It does now, and even though this is just the conference final, Stanley Cup fever has certainly hit Detroit. Even though the wings are down in the game, their fans are certainly happy with their season, and why not? News break is next. You're watching Stanley Cup 87 from Detroit. Edmonton three and the Red Wings two. We've completed two periods of game number four. Danny Gare is best remembered as a Buffalo Sabre, having scored 50 goals twice there, but he watches this series from an interesting perspective, having played for Detroit last season and for Edmonton this season. Have you cheered for all five goals, or do you have a favorite? Uh -huh. Well, it's hard to have a little bit of a mixed emotions being having friends on both sides, but it's been a great series so far. And, uh, you got to give the Red Wings a lot of credit. They've certainly uh, come out and uh, worked their hearts out, and it's been a good series. When you left Detroit at the end of last season, did you have any idea they could uh, come this far this fast? I, I, you know, I said to somebody the other day, if somebody, if I had to bet, I would have never bet that they'd be playing where they are. But you certainly got to give them a lot of credit. The organization's done a great job, and, and Demirs has certainly done an excellent job behind the bench. Now tell me what you learned in Edmonton. Did you learn that this team could play as a team as well as it has? Was that, that thinking earlier in the season of trying to regain the Stanley Cup, they'd have to get this kind of use out of McTavish and McSorley? Well, I think that that was a, a, a big key that they had to have a good third and fourth line, and that's one thing that I know that Glenn Sather really um, worked on, and I made some deals towards the end of the year in order to have that. But the one thing I think they really used a lot is are their third and fourth lines because of uh, the series is that he hopes that uh, they'll be, you know, being a little longer. So hopefully that he'll, you know, that they'll be okay. So. Yeah, that didn't really help you get into the lineup when no, these when these it fellas really got playing time and played so well. It did. It hurt my situation, but uh, he told me that he said my situation was going to be that way. So it's nice to see that uh, Marty McSorley playing so well and McTavish and. Uh, and uh, it takes a little pressure off guys like Gretzky and Curry and the rest of them. Well, if you can't make a team, it's uh, just as well as a team as good as Edmonton. Danny, thanks for being with us from Detroit. Game four of the Campbell Conference Final on Stanley Cup 87. ...by Leo Chevalier dress shirts. Leo Chevalier makes excellent shirt colors. The rest of the shirt is just as good. Buy a Leo Chevalier. There's a difference you can feel and enjoy. Get it together with Leo Chevalier dress shirts. The final break with inferior colors. Stanley Cup 87 from Detroit, Michigan. After two periods of play, it is Edmonton 3 and Detroit 2. Now with his comments, here's Dave. Spectators as 
they have been labeled with much derision, but they must understand they're in a losing battle against the Detroit fans, who are simply the best hockey fans in the world. The Red Wings missed the playoffs 15 times in 17 years, from 1966 to 1983. And still, Detroit fans managed to retain their enthusiasm for NHL hockey. If any other team had produced such a terrible record, that team would surely have folded. Detroit managed to prosper during that time and is now entitled to take a deep bow and to accept congratulations. With or without Octopus, these Detroit fans are unique. They are the most deserving winners of the 1987 Stanley Cup playoffs. And no matter which team you're cheering for, it is okay to cheer for them. Welcome back to the broadcast booth at the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit, where, again, around 20,000 of those great Detroit hockey fans that Dave Hodge talked about her here, and we're up over 80 degrees in the broadcast booth. Come on to the rink and get a suntan, just like being in a tanning salon. And it should be a very interesting third period. Dan, what do you think about the Edmonton fans? They criticize, I think it's the culture of Canada. The Canadian fans at any sport basically are quiet. And Edmonton, the, the fans get to see the likes of Grant Fuhr, Gretzky, Anderson, Messier. They're spoiled, yes. And uh, I just I, I just think they get knocked around a little bit too much. Yeah, I think they're very good hockey fans. They're there every night, that's for sure. That's the key. And uh, the other thing, I, I find the building, the Northlands Coliseum, the acoustics don't lead to the loud noise that you hear here in Detroit or here in Chicago. Meanwhile, don't worry if you're an Edmonton Oilers <laughs> fan. You're in good shape. Your club is leading three to two. They lead the series two games to one. John, the warm night. The Red Wings have not used as much of their bench as the Oilers. Will that be a factor? It could be, couldn't it? Well, Sather's thought that way all throughout the playoffs. He's been using four lines as much as possible, even though he spotted Van Dorp. Detroit, as you just mentioned, shortened their bench. The last half, finally, Ashton and Oates saw some ice time, and those two did not the first half. Lamb has had very little ice time, and uh, Higgins very little ice time. And plus, they've gone with five defensemen and spotted Sharples. I think it's really up to a shortened Detroit bench to get it going. That's going to be tough. Here's DeLorme, who's limping on a gimpy ankle. Lured it in. Greg back to get it to McClellan. Edmonton break out. Here's Hunter. Moving in. His shot blocked by DeLorme. Hunter and DeLorme battle. And Iserman able to clear it to Probert. Back to Steve Iserman. Into Gallant. Trying to get around McClellan, who skated him out of the play. And McClellan takes over for Edmonton. His pass to McTavish, back to McClellan. Into McTavish. Flips one wide of the net, and Rick Zombo is back for Detroit. He cleared it into center. Coffee takes over there. Coffee into Gretzky, offside at the Edmonton blue line. We've played a minute and one second of the third period. We hope you enjoyed the game. A lot of feeling around about Gretzky, how he has been held to an assist throughout the first portion of this series. Of course, he has an assist in this hockey game, but you could see the jump and the competitive spirit with him. He talked about how it was tough for an individual to be very good against a team with the style that Detroit employs, the congestion in the area, as Glenn Hanlon has a problem with his equipment. Shots on goal during that second period. Burr had four, Sean Burr, the centerman, and Klima, the winger, had four. So that's eight of their 12 shots from two players. And Klima's had, had seven right, on the night. Absolutely right, over two periods. Gretzky out there on the line again with McSorley and Crucial Niski. This is the line that gave Detroit the lead late in the second period. Oates is out with Klima and Ashton for Detroit. Now it's Oates. Got it out of the zone. Red Wings take over, but Klima has to turn in his own zone. To Dave Lewis. Now to Brent Ashton. Fired off a skate into the Detroit zone. Fuhr took no chance as they just came out and grabbed it, and we'll get a face off down in the Edmonton Oiler into the ring. Well, Klima, we talked about the shots that he's had in this hockey game. He's playing with that bad elbow. The training staff with that elbow on Klima. What they've done is they've taken a, a felt piece of padding in a horseshoe shape, put that on the elbow, and then they have a foam sleeve 
that fits along along the most part of his arm, most of his arm that is, and then they put the elbow pad over top. And the training staff talked about his toughness. They say he's an aggressive player that takes a lot of bumping and bruising and plays with those bumps and bruises. And as we pointed out, he's had seven shots on goal through the first two periods. From the faceoff, it's McSorley. Around on the boards to Gretzky. Oilers come out of their own zone. Paul Coffey. Into the Detroit end of the rink. Winding it through for Crucial Niski. Zombo there to Ashton. Ashton breaking out with Klima. Ashton tied up by Coffey. Gets it loose to Old Shot. They save Fuhr. Lewis the rebound. And that just went wide of the net. Fuhr was caught out of there, and now he gets back in as the puck winds up underneath Mitch Sorley. Oh, the Red Wings with in an eyelash of tying it there. Well, I just announced the attendance here, 19,775. That's a season high. I don't know where you could put anybody else in this building. <laughs> they have them jammed in. Face off coming up deep in the Edmonton zone after a big save by Fuhr. Roots a line in now for Edmonton. Loses it, but Messier there to cover up. Headmanning it to McSorley. Now McSorley fires it in. Messier goes to the bench. He was out there for the faceoff. Here's Gretzky in the corner. Lost it. And DeLorme hit the referee with it, but Adam Oates is there to cover up for Detroit. Oates missed a check from McSorley. Gretzky took it away from him. Cleared it near the Red Wing line, and here's Norwood flipping it back in. Roots the line and cleared it out. Norwood Tipping it away from Gretzky to Delore. Up the middle to Oates. He tips it in. Here's Ashton hustling in with Smith. Ashton took Smith out. Roots the line and cleared it away to Anderson. Anderson couldn't get it out of the zone. And now circling back is Nielsen. Gives it to Anderson. To Messier. Mark Messier. There Glenn Anderson trying to stuff it in. Put it right through the crease. And Burr cleared it for Detroit. Randy Gregg knocking it down. Now to Lowe, to Messier, to Nielsen. Kent Nielsen to Messier. Messier. Fired it, it hit a Detroit player, and the Red Wings come back. Three men, but three Oilers are back. There's Koser. Couldn't get around Gregg. And Gregg able to clear it out of there for Edmonton. Here's Lewis. Again, Gregg. Standing up at the blue line, broke it up. It's shot in by Detroit. Lowe is there. Flipped it over for Curry, now to Anderson. And he shoots it down the ice, and as Lewis goes back to touch it, it will be an icing call against the Oilers. We're seeing very, very quick line changes here in the third period. Kevin Lowe, who was the first ever draft choice for the Edmonton Oilers. He was picked number 21 in the first round, the last choice. Last choice. And that was in 79. Barry Fraser is the man that heads the scouting staff for Edmonton. He considers Kevin Lowe his proudest moment as far as draft choices go with the Edmonton Oilers. Said Kevin was mainly because he was their first one. He's just done so well over the years and continued to improve. It's just a very satisfying feeling. Very steady hockey player night after night. He also scored the first ever Edmonton Oiler goal in the National Hockey League in Chicago, the old stadium, in October of that 79 season. Here's a big face-off in the Edmonton zone. 16-13 left in the third period. Oilers come up with it, and Crucial Niski able to clear it out of there. Hustling back is Lewis. He's knocked down. Now McTavish getting it. Has Hunter open. Tried to get it to him, but tipped away by Handler. And here's Gallant. Gerard Gallant shoots it in. Coffee and Gallant back to get it. It comes to Probert behind the net. Probert centered. Good play by McTavish to tip it away. And Hunter controls for Edmonton. Shot up to center. Knocked down by the Red Wings. Back they come as Probert flips it in. Probert and Coffee into the corner. McTavish gets the puck. Three-man Edmonton breaks. Three Red Wings are back. They just have to shoot it in. 
And it bounces all the way back into center. McTavish again cleared it in. Here's Lewis to Zombo. Now to Iserman. Iserman carrying in offside at the Edmonton Blue Line. 15-14 left in regulation time with the score. Edmonton 3, Detroit 2. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. <coughs> There's only been one shot on goal recorded here during this period, and that's been by the wings, and that was Grant Fuhrer with that big save from the slot. Edmonton have used everybody on the bench in the third period except for Van Dorp. Detroit has used everybody on their bench except for Higgins, Lamb, and Sealing. That's their fourth forward line. Everybody else, all six defensemen, have seen ice time for Detroit. Here are the orders. Working it to Gretzky. He drops it to Rootsalainen. Now to Smith, and Smith dumps it in. Hanlon setting it up for DeLorme. The Red Wings try and clear it out, and DeLorme just scoops it up high. Fuhr has to play the puck, so there's no icing. Rootsalainen back to get it. Cleared one. Tikkanen missed it. It comes to center. Now shot back in by DeLorme. And going back to get it is Steve Smith. Smith lost it. Centered out in front. Here's Oates getting ready. Shoots one. Comes right in. Pure stop. Oates who walk in alone. Edmonton break back, but we're going to get a stoppage and a penalty against Rootsalainen of Edmonton. And a big save moments ago by Spruce Grove, Alberta native Grant Pure. Nobody knows. Rayo Rootsalainen, a holding penalty, 5.30 the time, and uh, Detroit power play coming up. They're 0 for 2, by the way. He's up high in the slot. Rootsalainen gets a hold of his man, which is Klima, and we'll see him wrap up Klima, and Klima's going to go down right there. Oh, Rootsalainen looks pretty strong in that play. Detroit 0 for 2. They've had two shots on those power plays, and that's the man that drew the penalty, Peter Klima. Meanwhile, Adam Holtz just about... Tied this game up. Detroit with the man advantage, but Lowe is there to clear it. Ever since Oates got back into the game during the second half of that second period, he's played very, very well. I don't know why he didn't play very much during the first half of the second period. I'm thinking now, John, in retrospect, maybe because they switched Gretzky to that fourth line that Demers was trying to get somebody special out against Gretzky. But be. I just know that Oates has played very well. Maybe Demers did something to get Oates going. Because he responded well. Here's O'Connell Ian Norwood of the point men on the Red Wing power play. Up front, it's Ashton, Iserman, and Gallant. Shot in, but Blow is there to clear it right back out for Edmonton. And it's O'Connell taking over. 115 left in the Oiler penalty. Mike O'Connell. Dumps it in. Fuhr leaves it for Randy Gregg. And they get it by O'Connell at the point. And Norwood will have to hustle back. Norwood to O'Connell. He just took a man out. And here's a three on two Red Wing break. Iserman into Brent Ashton. Shoot shot wide. Centered out in front. Iserman had a whack at it. And Fuhr stopped it. Now O'Connell to Lee Norwood. Shooting. That hit McTavish and bounces out to center. And Norwood has to go back. 38 seconds left in the penalty to Iserman. Into Ashton. To Gallant. Never got the shot off, and Charlie Huddy cleared it away. O'Connell made a great play to set up Norwood for the slap shot from the point. Oh, here's Messier stealing. And Hanlon had to come sliding up to take it away from Messier. And it was McTavish who blocked the shot and hurt his leg on the play. Here's Probert into Kleena. Shoots one. That's just wide of the net, and... I don't think it, there's Delorme at the point shooting wide. First shot I don't think Fuhr ever saw. Here are the Red Wings, Strobert behind the goal. Now back on the ice is Roots and just out of the penalty box. He races after a little spot, but Hanlon played it and then took Roots and out of the play. And the rookie Sharples trying to clear it out. Now gets help from Oates. Holtz to Klima, knocked away by Greg, and here's Gretzky. To Greg, to Curry, into Tikkanen. Essa Tikkanen moving in, all tied up by Lewis. 
Lewis did everything but put a bow on him the way he tied him up. <laughs> That's the experience of Lewis. Many years of doing that. Here's Adam Oates for the Red Wings. And now it's Kevin Lowe. Getting it into center ice. Here's Tikkanen. Teams back at full strength. Tikkanen to Gretzky. Gretzky to Curry. Knocked away by Sean Burr. Burr cleared it. Coffey held it in. And now Burr comes back for Detroit. Red Wings trailing 3-2. to two. Zombo to center. Flips it in. That's offside at the Edmonton Oilers blue line. With the score, Edmonton 3, Detroit 2. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. Glenn Sather and Jacques Demers involved in this battle. 11-23 left. 3-2 in favor of Edmonton. Sather says... Robert behind the goal. Now back on the ice is Roots and Linen just out of the penalty box. He races after a loose puck, but Hanlon played it and then took Roots and Linen out of the play. And the rookie Sharples trying to clear it out. Now gets help from Oates. Oates to Klima. Knocked away by Greg, and here's Gretzky. To Greg, to Curry. Into Tikkanen. That's a Tikkanen moving in. All tied up by Lewis. Lewis did everything but put a bow on him the way he tied him up. That's the experience of Lewis. Many years of doing that. Here's Adam Oates for the Red Wings. And now it's Kevin Lowe. Getting it into center ice. Here's Tikkanen. Teams back at full strength. Tikkanen to Gretzky. Gretzky to Curry. Knocked away by Sean Burr. Burr cleared it. Coffey held it in. And now Burr comes back for Detroit. Red Wings trailing three to two. Zombo to center. Flips it in. That's offside at the Edmonton Oilers blue line. With the score, Edmonton three, Detroit two. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. Glenn Sather and Jacques Demers involved in this battle. 11-23 left. 3-2 in favor of Edmonton. Sather says he likes to use four lines. He says they can forecheck properly if they have four lines. Demers trying to put together his best nine forwards, which he's done here in the third period. Demers incidentally mentioned how many players he thought he needed for them to be really, for them to have a real good chance of winning a championship, and he said five. And so he has a master plan. You'll see more changes with his team. Well, if they're five men short, of being a good hockey club, they're doing a heck of a job. They're giving Edmonton all they can handle here and trail just three to two as a skirmish develops. Bridgman and in the Huddy. corner. Huddy and Bridgman. And then everybody else. And there's a punch is thrown now by Koser. Koser and McClellan. McClellan had gone in there with Huddy and Koser came in late. And they had been jawing at each other all throughout this hockey game. And they're in close quarters here. The linesmen are deciding how they're going to break this up without any see Bonnie trying to get underneath with his right hand. Closer's left hand is loose. Whoop. And now that's broken up. And Bridgman still has a hold of McTavish. Bridgman and Huddy were the original two combatants. Mel Bridgman got Glenn Anderson out of the game in game three late as Anderson picked up 17 minutes in penalties, so he was not around for the winning goal by McSorley and Bridgman here trying to spark his club again. Dennis Morrell just saying, fellas, break it up. McClellan already in the penalty box with Koser. He and Koser having words. We'll mention those words on a Sunday. We have 11.01 left in regulation time. Edmonton still leading the Red Wings, three to two. What makes to break it up or to maybe add a little bit of action, which he did. 
Two players from each team in the penalty box as yet no official announcement. We'll try and pick up the PA announcer when he does make the official call. Still 11 01 to play in the third period. We've had no scoring here in period three. One goal in the first period and then four goals in the second. Two by each team after Edmonton had scored the only goal of the first period. We're eight minutes 59 seconds into this third period. Here's the announcement. Number 24, Kevin McClellan, two minutes for roughing and five minutes for fighting. And at number 14, Frank McTavish, two minutes for roughing. Detroit penalties, number 26, Joe Koser, two minutes for roughing and five minutes for fighting. And at number 15, Mel Bridgman, two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalties, eight minutes, 59 seconds. McClellan for Edmonton. So coincidental penalties all the way around as you look at the penalty timekeeper. And Wayne Gretzky with a bloody nose. I think that happened when Lewis gave him a pretty good shot when he moved the puck across to Crucial Niski, and Crucial Niski scored on the play. We were looking at the official timekeepers area, the off ice officials, when they were recording those last penalties. They're from Washington for this game. Play underway, teams at full strength as Lowe races back. Probert stole it. Probert. And Fuhrer came out and made the save, and Probert wound up in the net. And a penalty to Kevin Lowe for tripping will give Detroit a power play. See, they're very, very upset on the Edmonton bench. Lowe came back, but Lowe knocked the skates out, the feet out, from Probert before Probert got the shot. And we'll see the puck get dumped out here, and Lowe's going to really scramble to get across to Probert. Now watch where Lowe hits first, the man and then the puck. And that's why the call has been made by Morrell. The man first, and then the puck. Prober leaned in. He leaned in to Kevin Lowe, which is a smart thing to do. And Edmonton will be shorthanded. The reaction on the Oilers bench, well, they were not happy with that call whatsoever. Pretty hard to argue with the call. Absolutely. The call's right because Lowe who actually had a chance at the loose puck originally, was beaten to it by Probert, but he went and tried the right play, but he got the legs before the puck. So watch him get the legs there. Now the puck, and the call has been made. Probert with a pretty good individual effort on the play. Tripping against low, 9.25 left, or 9.25 the time, 10.35 remaining, and that gets this Detroit car fired up. Red Wings with the man advantage. Their fourth one of the hockey game, Dan, yet to score. 0 for 3, here's Norwood. Moving it in, and Randy Gregg. Positioned perfectly to pick it off and clear it away. And Eisenman's getting stronger on faceoffs as this game's moving along. Here's Norwood. To Mel Bridgman. Actually to Eisenman, to Norwood. And it's cleared back out of there by Gregg again with Eisenman going back to pick it up. He leaves it for Sharples to Norwood. Norwood to Sharples. Now ahead to Iserman. Iserman poking it through, broken up by Coffey. They failed to clear it. Iserman trying to bar it through, but Coffey took him out and Fuhrer covered up on the puck. 116 left in Lowe's penalty. 951 left. In the third period, I mentioned how Eisenman's getting stronger. He's winning a lot of faceoffs in what you call the offensive zone. That's the zone of Edmonton. He missed 29 games last year, not this previous season. The year before, he collided with Lee Norwood when Norwood played for St. Louis and broke his collarbone. All summer long, Eisenman worked playing at tennis and handball, games where you have to use those shoulders a lot. And he's in great shape. He's also put on some weight top half of his body since two years ago, about 15 pounds worth. And I think that's why he's got all that, the ability to hang, hang in there as the games move along. Came back to lead the Red Wings over the regular season with 90 points in 80 games. And he's leading them again in the playoffs. 16 points in 14 games coming into this game this evening. 3-2 Edmonton leading. 
Well, and the power play still in bold for Detroit. Now this face off, this is the strong side for Messier. He's better to the left of Fuhrer than he is to the right of Fuhrer. We'll see if he can draw it back. Kevin Lowe, excuse me, Coffee's over there to shoot the puck around on his forehand as he's a left-handed shot. But Iserman wins the draw. To Sharple, shoots right on. Fuhrer glove save. Tossed it aside and Coffee scoops it high to center ice. Messier down after it. Trying to work around Sharple. Sharple took him out and O'Connell gets the puck. 58 seconds left in the penalty to Edmonton. Here's Iserman. To Sharples. Dumps it in, but Coffey back for the order. Third one, Hunter taken out of the play. Now Klima trying to get it into the corner. Coffey intercepts and shoots it away. 40 seconds left. In Lowe's penalty. There's Mike O'Connell. Head manning it to Delore. Now to Ashton. Ashton across to Klima. Cutting in. Shoots. Oh, that deflected. Went wide. Here's Klima centered. Ashton a whack at it. Ashton still after the puck. But down on the ice. Paul Coffey to cover up on it. With Ashton whacking away. Coffey pulled that puck into his body. Morrell was right there and he waved his head back and forth saying, no way, he's going to give a penalty. The puck's high in the air here and it's deflected down before Fuhrer could get it. Now Ashton goes to the net looking for a rebound and a deflection. Watch Coffey's right hand, or his left hand. He's going to pull it right in to his body. Detroit going to the net on the power play and Ashton's there this time. Fuhrer covering up on the short side. Coffey pulls it in and no penalty called. 15 seconds remaining now in that minor penalty to Kevin Lowe. In this period, Detroit have outshot Edmonton five to nothing. They've had one shot on goal during this power play. 15 seconds still left in Lowe's penalty. 8.50 left in regulation time. Messier trying the stalling tactics. See, they go with McTavish on the faceoff now because Eisenman's been beating Messier. McTavish and Iserman. And the puck is cleared out of there by Edmonton. DeLorme has to go back. DeLorme having trouble with a bouncing puck, just knocked it off onto the wing for Iserman. Steve Iserman. Red Wings have a three on two break. Low back on. There's a shot by Iserman. Pure made the save. Low is back on and got back into that play. And just in the nick of time. Now McTavish trying to clear. Norwood couldn't hold it in. Gretzky racing after it with DeLorme. Gretzky poking it in front. DeLorme cleared it and hit Coffey and comes right back to DeLorme. DeLorme firing it out and down the ice. And Lowe goes back to get it for Edmonton. Just over eight minutes left in regulation time. Edmonton only had four players on the ice for about 15 seconds. Steve Smith wasn't sure if he should be on or not. Now they just got him back onto the ice. Buck has flipped in. Here's Marty McSorley. In with Zombo. Zombo took McSorley out. Over onto the other wing for Ashton. At center to Oates. Oates has Klima with him. So is Ashton, but Rootsalainen intercepts. And Edmonton start back. And it's shot in by Rootsalainen. In comes McSorley. He's on side in the play, so it's... The icing was waved off. Crucial Niski tried to center. Hanlon knocked it away. And now it's Brent Ashton. He's taken out of the play. McSorley in doing some aggressive poor checking. Gets the puck to Gretzky. Gretzky to Smith. Shot it just wide. Oh, Smith with a big chance. Edmonton's Gretzky holding it in. Into Anderson to Crucial Niski, but he just let it go. Seven minutes left. Lewis to Klima. Peter Klima. Taken out of the play by Randy Gregg. And now Anderson feeds Messier. The Oilers with a 3-2 lead. Messier. Dropping it back. Anderson the trailer. Backhander. High off the glass. And here comes Oates. Into center ice. With a pass to Higgins has been used sparingly. Lowe took him out. And back to get it is Gregg to Anderson. Burr came in. Took Anderson out of the play, but the Oilers get it anyway, and Greg shot it to center. Sharples to O'Connell. 
Red Wings dump it in. Randy Gregg let it go. Sharples held it in. Shot wide. Over to get it is Bridgman. Into the corner to Burr. Now into Higgins. Centered it in front. A shot from O'Connell. And that was blocked in front of the net, I believe, by Messier. Absolutely. Anderson stayed with O'Connell. But O'Connell got the shot away. And Messier was there. Here's Burr now tied up by Curry as the Oilers show they can play some defense as well. Yeah, they're playing great defense, but you have to also admire the courage of the Red Wings here. They've shortened their bench, and they're continuing to try and try and try, but Edmonton, known for offense, are great in their own zone. With the score, Edmonton 3, Detroit 2. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. Elon. Five minutes, 43 seconds left in regulation time. Edmonton 3, Detroit 2. And Edmonton victory would give them a series lead of 3-1. to one. Talking about Edmonton's defensive play, we can't uh, overlook the fact that at the start of the second period, they turned the puck over twice for goals against. But since that point, they've been good, very good. Here's Huddy. Clearing one into center ice. Hunter for the Oilers. Hunter turns, tried a wrist shot that hit DeLorme. And this is DeLorme for Detroit. DeProbert dumps it in. Gallant chasing in. Copy back to the Oilers. Cleared it. Knocked down by Detroit. Cleared away by Curry. And then McTavish shoots at the center. Red Wings Probert shooting it right back in. Copy for Edmonton. Played it off the boards. We're down under five minutes left in regulation time. Here's DeLorme shooting it in. Fuhrer leaves it for Huddy. The crucial Niski. Crucial Niski to Gretzky. Gretzky moves in, shoots. Hanlon turned that aside. DeLorme trying to get it out. Smith held it in. Now his shot blocked by Norwood. Norwood to Probert. Back to Norwood. Roots the line and takes Norwood out of the play, and Steve Smith plays the puck. Smith gets it to Curry, and Curry just flips to center ice. O'Connell hustling back for Detroit. 420 left. 3 2 Edmonton. This is Norwood. To O'Connell. Into Ashton, up the middle, in on goal, and McSorley got back to partially block the shot and it the flex into the crowd. McSorley saw Gretzky was up for checking. He dropped back to try and find his winger and then made a great play to break into the middle and stop the shot. There's everybody on one side of the ice except for McSorley. And he got across on Ashton as Ashton wanted to use the, the big shot. Now watch everybody on one side of the ice. There's three Oilers except for McSorley, the only man over on the side where the puck wasn't. They call that the weak side of the ice, the side of the ice where the puck is. Coaches will refer to that as being the strong side of the ice. It's a pretty good defensive play by Marty McSorley. He's the guy that had the game winner in game three and has played well here again tonight. 408 left in the third period. Three to two, Edmonton. I haven't seen Tikkanen on the ice for a while, Dan. Didn't play that much in the second period either. And I look over at the bench. I don't I don't think he's on the bench right now for the Oilers. Hunter Anderson and Crucial Nesky have scored for Edmonton. Burr and Gallant for Detroit. Doing a little search to find Tekin, and I don't believe he's there. And they had Crucial Nesky playing on the left side with Gretzky that last shift. I know that he had, had had sore ribs earlier in the series. He'd been feeling pretty good. But he's not there. Oh, there he is on the end of the bench. Very end of the bench. <laughs> Buck is shot in by Detroit. Back. Greg can't clear it. Now it's centered out in front. Comes to the point. Sharp pulls a drive and a good kick save with his stick by Fuhr on Sharple's shot. And here's Gretzky. Flipping it in. Sharples and McSorley. Sharples wins that battle. Cleared it. Crucial Niski cleared it in. Now Gretzky behind the net. Out in front. McSorley a whack at it, but it's covered up by Hanlon for a faceoff. Sharples tried that reverse play. He's a youngster in the league, and Wayne Gretzky, the vet, was standing behind Glenn Hanlon waiting for that loose puck. Sharples had a good chance himself. Watch Sharples. The reverse without looking. Who's standing there? 99. 
who thinks ahead of most young players, set up that scoring chance for the Oilers. Prior to that, Sharples, there you can see him being tutored on the play by Demers, but Sharples had a shot on Grant Fuhrer, and you know why they use him on the point in the power play, because that shot was a heck of a shot. He got a lot on it. Grant Fuhrer had to kick out that right leg and use his goal stick to stop it. I like that, the way the coach goes to the young guy on the bench. The other players come over and try and say, listen, keep it going, you're playing well. That's what Greg Stephan did to the youngster Sharples. 3.36 left in the third period. Edmonton 3, Detroit 2. Messier again losing a draw to Iserman. Iserman has very, been very proficient in the face-off department tonight. Here's Gallant scooping it in. Coffey back to get it to Glenn Anderson. Back to Coffey. Fired it over to Messier. Now to Kent Nielsen. Held in by Norwood. Bouncing puck in the slot. Probert check. And here comes Anderson with Nielsen. Two on two break. Anderson trying to go around Delore. Firing it over, and it's Gerard Gallant. Out to Iserman. Iserman just flipped it. Huddy knocks it down, gives it to Nielsen. Kent Nielsen to Glenn Anderson. Shoots right on, handling the save. Norwood takes the rebound. 245 left in regulation time. To Iserman. And Iserman just fires it in. Pure quickly clearing it to McClellan. And then it's McTavish able to shoot it to the Detroit line. With Oates going back. Joe O'Connell. Into center ice. Here's Klima coming back across center to get it ahead for Oates. But Kevin Lowe is there defensively for the Oilers to Hunter. And he clears the zone. Klima back for Detroit. To Ashton. Now to Oates. Coffee broke it up. Oates still battling for it. Hunter comes back to clear it. Less than two minutes to play in regulation time. 3 2 Edmonton. Here's Klima. And then that's called back on a two line offside pass. 151 left in regulation time. 3 2 Edmonton. Starting win. With John Davidson, Jim Taddy, Dave Hodge, Dan Kelly in Detroit at the Joe Lewis Arena. A 3-2 Edmonton lead with 151 left, as you see on the top right hand of your television screen remaining. So what Demers is going to do is go with Oates on this shift at center ice with Ashton and Klima. Klima has been playing right wing most of this game. He's playing the left side now, you see, against McSorley. And he'll come back his next shift with Eisenman. He's got to be thinking ahead all the time. The Oilers using McSorley, Krusilniski, and Gretzky. McSorley's been used a lot this game in, uh, towards the end of periods. Gretzky's played more on this line tonight than I think his normal <laughs> line. Here's Oates shooting it in. Coffee against Ashton. Comes to Krusilniski. And held in by O'Connell. Trying to center one. Fewer bats it away. Here's Detroit with Oates. Trying to center, Coffey got a piece of it. Now Klima buzzing around to Oates. Ashton a shot, blocked at the defense. And then Edmonton able to clear it. That shot never got to Pure. It was blocked by his defense. Charlie Huddy's the man that blocked it. O'Connell kept that puck in as crucial Niski had tried to lift it up over top. And that almost cost the Oilers a goal with a good play by O'Connell. Here is O'Connell. One minute left in regulation time. Edmonton with a 3-2 lead. Here's Oates to Gallant. Hanlon to the bench. Six attackers for Detroit. Norwood shooting it in. And Greg fires it back out. And that's going to go all the way down the ice. O'Connell back to touch it. And that's an icing call against Edmonton as Greg fired it too hard and went all the way. 42 seconds left, and Demers and the Red Wings will... Take a 30-second timeout here. There was 151 remaining in the third when this shift started. Gretzky was on the ice, and he's still on the ice. In fact, now just going over for a change. They'll put McTavish and Messier back for the face-off. Demers is going to put his best people out there. Eisenman will certainly be there. Well, Morrell now just now seeing the timeout's been called by the wing. 
what that did was buy Detroit an additional 20 or 30 seconds by not having it called until the last second. Well, the Red Wings will get a face-off deep in the Edmonton zone with 42 seconds remaining. Dan, you have to address your players in this situation. What to do if you win the face-off? You can tell which man is leading this hockey game and which man is trailing. The Oilers have been in this situation before. They lead by one. DeMar said he wanted three men to go to the goal if they win the faceoff. Eisenman now getting last second instructions again. The fans, the majority on their feet, are waiting for this faceoff. The thing is, you have to school your players. What do you do when you lose it? And what do you do if you win the faceoff? If he wins it, he wants three men in front to try and screen fewer and get a rebound. If they lose it, Randy Gregg's over against the boards. He's a left-handed shot. He wants to get to that loose puck in the corner if it's drawn back there, and he'll hammer it out, or, out around behind Grant Fuhr and try and get it out around the other side. And he'll try and get that puck up high on the glass. There's Demers saying three. Ashton Tui wants in front of the net. Meanwhile, it's going to be Messier and Bridgman on the faceoff. Edmonton with Messier, Gregg, Hunter, McTavish and low on the ice. He wanted Ashton off the ice. They had seven players, only allowed six. For Detroit, it's Bridgman, Gallant, Probert, Iserman, Norwood, and the rookie Sharples. They'll try and get it to Sharples at the back of the circle. It's Bridgman on the draw. They're playing for the win here on this draw. They're not even worried about losing the draw. Here's Bridgman against Messier. See Eisenman sneaking in. He's inside that circle already. Bridgman wants to draw it back to, to Eisenman. Again, Bridgman and Messier get ready. Red Wings get it to Norwood. Norwood shoots. Bjorn save. And it's cleared away by Greg. That'll go all the way down the ice. And Detroit will get another faceoff deep in the Oilers zone. Now with 32 seconds left. Detroit worked that very well. Bridgman got it to Iserman. Iserman snuck in as soon as, or actually even before the puck was dropped, and all he did was flick it back to Norwood for the shot. And the shot was down, and they couldn't get out a rebound around Grant Fuhr. They did what they wanted. Jacques Demers can't believe it. They executed it very well. You see the miles showing there. Now watch, Bridgman just flick it back to Iserman, who moves it back to the defenseman. Everybody will go to the front of the net as soon as they win the draw. You see Eisenman on the very left of your screens. He's already inside the face-off circle. Oh, not able to show it. We'll get ready for the next one here. 32 seconds left. Six attackers Detroit again. Bridgman against Messier. This time Messier gets the draw. Gallant held it in, but a good play by McTavish to clear the zone. Sharples back for Detroit into Bridgman. Well, that was offside as the Red Wing was still trapped in the zone. And with 22 seconds left, the faceoff will be at the Edmonton Blue Line. Now, last time, we had talked about McTavish wanting to lift the other player's stick and then kick the puck back. That's what Messier did on Eisenman. Watch Messier lift up Bridgman's stick and then kick it with his left foot. That's a smart play by Mark Messier. Then he's the man that got to that loose puck. There are going to be some penalties called here. With 22 seconds left, I saw Morrell point to the Detroit bench and then the Edmonton bench, so he's going to send somebody off. Probert and McSorley, and they're both going to their own dressing rooms. Probert takes the long route. McSorley's gone right along the bench and back in behind. There goes Probert, and they're gone. Now, I don't know if they'll be given two minutes or ten. But the faceoff outside of the Edmonton zone now. You know, Messier is so strong. Bridgman is strong himself, and Messier just lifted up his stick and then kicked the puck back with his blade. It's a good play. There you see the penalty timekeeper writing down the respective penalties. Sorely. Uh, 
10 minute misconduct. And a 10 minute misconduct to Prober. 22 seconds left here. So Connell shooting it in for Klima. It went off Klima, so there's no icing. Low back to get it. Knocked down by Gallant, but he couldn't hold it in. And Hunter feeds it to Messier. Eight seconds left. Messier to Dave Hunter. Shoots at the open net, and Norwood got a piece of it. It went wide. Just a couple of seconds left, though. And this one's over, and the Oilers win 3 2. Edmonton leads the series 3 to 1, have a chance to wrap it up at the Northlands Coliseum on Wednesday. A good defensive battle, both teams involved. Edmonton, one goal better in this series almost every game. When we return, the Carling O'Keefe Game Stars. By Micron, introducing the new Micron Mega, the first skate designed using computer technology and the science of biomechanics. The result is a truly superior performing hockey skate. The all-new Mega, from the innovators at Micron. And now the Carly O'Keefe Game Stars, the number three star from the Edmonton Oilers, Marty McSorley. The number two star from the Detroit Red Wings, Peter Klima. And the number one star from the Edmonton Oilers, Wayne Gretzky. And here's why he was the number one star. Watch, this is the winning goal as the Oilers break over the blue line. It'll be dropped to Gretzky, who spots Crucial Niski wide open. He scores. Edmonton wins by a score of three to two. You're watching Stanley Cup 87. The Oilers won this game three to two and they lead the series three games to one going back home to Edmonton. In the first period, Dave Hunter scored the only goal. Rail Rootsalainen made a great play and Hunter banged in the rebound. The Red Wings had only four shots, but then in a couple of shots early in the second period, Detroit grabbed the lead. Sean Burr and Gerard Gallant. Edmonton, however, scored two in a row. Glenn Anderson early in the period and Mike Krushelniski late and that was it as the Oilers shut down the Red Wings scoring attempts in the third period and won it by a score of three to two. I don't know how many times Wayne Gretzky's been uh, a first star in a game which he's only had one assist, but uh, tonight that was it. The four lines, however, included uh, two of them centered by Wayne Gretzky. Uh, did you think this series would come down to Edmonton scoring three and trying to hold Detroit to one or two? Well, we uh, definitely feel that uh, we can still score a lot more goals. And, uh, you know, we knew coming into the series that they were going to play a tight defensive-minded game. But uh, we're a little surprised that the, the goals are as low as they are. And I guess we're probably uh, very happy and a little bit surprised that our uh, defensive play has been tremendous. Would you be happier to score uh, six or seven, or is winning uh, important no matter what the score is? Well, it, it uh, doesn't matter what the score is. Uh, with this hockey club, if we win uh, eight, seven, or two to one, uh, we're all just as happy. We just want to uh, do what we have to do against each team to make sure we win. And against Detroit, they're playing obviously a defensive uh, clutch and grab style game. And if that's the way they're going to play, then we have to be patient and play for our chances. We've done that in this series, and uh, we've been successful. And now we have a tough game when we go home, and we just have to be uh, make sure we're ready and, and uh, prepared for that game. Are you hard on yourself? because you haven't scored goals or do you shrug your shoulders and say it doesn't matter? Well, it always matters because, uh, you know, that's my uh, responsibility on this hockey team. And, you know, everybody's got a job to do and everybody uh, has to do their, their job in order to win. And my job is to uh, help other guys score goals and for myself to score goals. Um, but there's a difference. You know, sometimes when you're not playing, when you're not scoring goals, you're not playing well. And right now I feel that uh, I'm playing well enough. We, we're winning, obviously. We're winning a lot of games. And when I feel that I'm contributing and we're winning and I'm getting chances, uh, I know sooner or later the puck's going to go in in the net um, and uh, you know I can't be too critical on myself and uh, I, I, I want to do well obviously but uh, we're winning and that's what counts and uh, you know the only thing I look at is sooner or later something's going to go in and hopefully uh, it's game five. Some other people felt Wayne Gretzky played well enough tonight well enough to be the Carling O'Keefe's number one game star and the $500 check goes to the Brantford Minor Hockey Association which is loving this series 500 from Greg Steffen and now 500 from Wayne Gretzky. Once again our final score Edmonton three and Detroit two. Stanley Cup 87 tonight from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Brought to you by Carling O'Keefe Breweries. And 
on the ice of the Joe Lewis Arena tonight. This is the goal that decided the issue as the Oilers break over the Detroit Blue Line. You'll see a drop pass to Gretzky. He holds it and then spots Mike Krusilniski wide open. He scores and Edmonton wins it by a score of three to two leads the series three games to one. Next action on Stanley Cup 87 comes your way Wednesday night from the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton. Game five of the Campbell Conference Final, 9.30 Eastern, 7.30 Mountain. It seems only a matter of time and uh, perhaps just one more game before the Edmonton Oilers will advance to the Stanley Cup Final and play either the Philadelphia Flyers or the Montreal Canadiens. In other years, the Oilers would be asked, what do you have to do to change your style to get ready for a tight checking Stanley Cup Final against a team of the Flyers of the Canadiens caliber? This season, that doesn't have to be asked because the Oilers would say, we just want to keep playing the way we have been against the Winnipeg Jets when they allowed only nine goals in the Smite Division Final and against the Detroit Red Wings when they're winning three Three straight games here. They have limited the Detroit Red Wings to just four goals. Edmonton's a defensive team now. Like it or not, they are winning. We bid you good night from Detroit. Stay tuned as Christine Cagney hastens her steps down the same path taken by her late father as the two-part season-ending Cagney and Lazy episode is next. The global television network is strictly prohibited. Join us for game five of this series Wednesday as we continue with Stanley Cup 87. Independent television system. Hill Street Blues action. And I find that it keeps an officer on his toes. Tuesday at 9. For the criminals. And the good guys on 2 and 7 CFAC Calgary. The subject today is power skating. Uh, skates are pretty much basic. The, uh, it depends on your likes or dislikes. I, in particular, like a skate that is fairly tight and uh, in the way of a fit, but I like the laces done up loosely. And when I wrap the top...